Yep. Good evening. Welcome to the Select Board Board of Health meeting on Wednesday, April 25th, 2018 at 6.08 p.m. tonight. Thank you. Um, we'll start out with the Pledge of Allegiance. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Thank you, everyone. We have minutes from the previous meeting. Um, oh, and we are being recorded, just in case you have questions on that. Um, so we have minutes of April 4th. I move to accept the minutes of April 4th. Second. Is there any further discussion? None. Hearing none, then, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Just okay. a comment, that wasn't your previous meeting, it was the meeting before, before. that. Correct, <laughs> April 4th. Okay. Um, well, just because Kevin's here tonight, we'll jump down. Kevin, um, to new business, he had the fog project for um, the sweet wastewater treatment plant. Um, Kevin, we're just um, going to make a motion. Sure, to yeah, I, I've spoke with Kevin, so I, I move to approve the fog contract uh, project. For the wastewater sewage treatment. Second. If there's no further discussion, all those in favor? This is Aye. With Dave, Dave Prickett Engineering. Dave Prickett yep. Engineering. That is correct. Aye. Aye. I said aye. For, oh, um, okay. So, okay. Wendy, that's unanimous. Mm -hmm. um, so, Kevin, if you yes. come in tomorrow, we'll, um, do, you have, do you want us to sign it tonight or do you want us to come in and sign it? There's some. Uh, the we're going to do some yeah, work. We're, we're going to work on it. and I are going to work on the probably amendment. We'll have it ready, so if you probably guys want to come in Probably next week, early. Oh, when she, when no, it might take Friday. longer, correct? It mm -hmm. won't be done tomorrow, correct? Uh, maybe it will. Okay. I'm hoping to. Stay tuned. I'll see you maybe. all Monday. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. okay. um, all right. Yeah, just Thank let you. us know, and we can come down and sign it, okay, Wendy? Yep. If you leave it out on the table, I don't want to I have other things I've been I've left out for a while. I want you to sign Okay. Okay. Very cool. Thank you very much. Appreciate the support. Have a good Thank night. You. Thank you. Good to see you. Bye. It's good to be seen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Board of Selectmen um, announcements. Does anyone have um, Excited for town meeting. Yes, we have very limited time for the, to get yeah. through things. So okay. The only thing that I, well, I, I guess it doesn't matter. I, I know that the sale of the land finally went through. I was going to talk about that. Are you going to talk about it? Mm -hmm. Want me to wait? Yeah, and you can join in when I get okay. to that because I have Great. some things to say. Um, well, the only other thing I had was that um, Wendy and I went to the Municipal Vulnerability talk about that Preparedness <laughs> meeting yesterday up at the FERCOG. Um, we were the first community to send in our report um, that had got, received the grant uh, to write the report. And um, so we are going to be certified by May 18th, which is the deadline for the first up to four hundred thousand dollar grant. Nice. And um, I met with um, Chris Curtis today to go over the culvert from Richardson's Candy Kitchen, which is Mass DOT culvert, mm -hmm. across to Mill Village, and um, he is going to put together something. This was um, based on yesterday's um, meeting. He put together some ideas. And I just, I want to shoot down a couple here. Um, the no, first one, obviously, was the, our priority was designing and permitting of the replacement culverts. Um, but he had also suggested the communications and evacuation plan for um, the dams on the from Great River Hydro. Mm -hmm. Carolyn, can I, I'm sorry, can I just interrupt you for a minute? Sure. Could we talk about these at next week's meeting? Because we do, we have at seven. Well, the, I, the only problem is Chris wants to have us agree what we want to focus in on, so we can okay. start today. Can I give you my opinion? Yeah. Well, my <laughs> opinion was we want to stay focused on Mill Village. Is, um, yeah, I thought the yeah. first item was the most and important. Mm -hmm. The emergency um, communications plan is part, the EAP, is part of their licensing requirement as of a year correct it will be a year in may that they have that. not submitted an eap so in other words all the dams on the connecticut river and the dams on the deerfield river do not have an emergency plan mm -hmm. so if any event happened none of the towns have emergency yep. um, plans but we why would we spend our money grant money to do something Correct. that they're required by licensing so i'm going to x that out right now right so i just wanted you to agree to not 
that's not what we want to fund because I'm I've been raising cane mm -hmm. on every single meeting and I'm going to go to the governor by next month mm -hmm. because it'll be a year. Um, evacuation plans. The schools have a really good evacuation plan. Right. Um, you know, Deerfield Academy, Avonbrook, and um, Bowman. But um, we do need to do a little bit. But I think we can do that ourselves. Right. And I don't want to again. I don't want to spend grant money. We're going to need it for the culvert. Right. Um, so then we jump down to three, which is the reverse 911. And again, we're, we're paying for code red already. Right. I think we're going to, yep. I mean, we need we're to good. get people to participate more, but to spend grant money on that, that's something we can do ourselves. But flood proof the town's wastewater treatment plants. We can increase the, the size of the concrete, mm -hmm. um, you know, the pools and stuff. Yeah. And then, oh, by the way, we need to like rewind them at the same time. So. I think we could do some of the sewer treatment upgrades through the resiliency of this. So I, I wanted to follow up on that, but not maybe do it the first time right. around because we Just haven't figured out what we're going to do. We okay. haven't had cricket long enough to sort out with what we're going to do. The only thing with number one, I'd, I'd just like to say that uh, if you speak with them not to I want to say this, spend too much time on that culvert near Richardson's Candy Kitchen. That's DOT. That's DOT. Right, okay, because the culvert itself is fine. It's just once it gets from one side to the other, there's no right. place for it to go, and that's exactly. the issue. Right. Okay. But it's, yep. it's DOT. Right. And Wendy and I found out that we well, can partner with DOT, and they can apply, apply for their own um, part of this project. project. I don't think that they're, they will probably do anything. I'm not, not that they're unwilling. I'm just saying that there's no need right there. So I don't know how far into that um, marshy area that DOT well, can deal so with. The, yeah. Um, you they know own, what I'm saying? They own probably 10 feet in. Hmm. So, but, but what's so yeah. great about this program is that it's really flexible. It right. covers the upfront engineering and permitting, yep. which usually, I mean, how often go to town meeting and ask for a hundred or two hundred thousand dollars in engineering and permitting, and say, "Well, we can't maybe afford to do the job. Well, maybe we're going to get a grant for this. This covers the upfront costs, right. and then secondary, they're having another round in, Ju in July, and we can apply for implementation in July. Right. And there still is not going to be very much competition because there's not many towns that are on the are still Lead in the pot. That. So we are going to have at least two rounds where we should be. Successful, no question. So, Carolyn, okay. watch out. <laughs> well, I'm I'm really no no, no I'm, I'm talking oh. about him. I'm oh, <laughs> um, I I so I'm kind of really excited, <laughs> okay. and then I wanted to talk with have Chris talk with Pricket once we get going with Pricket, and then we could figure out what we could do on the sewer treatment plants under this grant. And that would be like really huge. So, do I have a kind of agreement to call yeah. Chris and talk yeah. to him about uh, that? When you say number one the, sure. the number five about, are you just talking about arming the uh, plants from flooding? Well, what you, one of the things you would do is remember our um, the pools mm -hmm. are, are like yep. decaying. The concrete needs to be replaced. Yep. So what you do is you would build up the um, sides of the. Um, you know the p p ponds or the pools or okay. whatever and for more resiliency and then oh by the way we have to reline them because you have to have contiguous mm -hmm. and that's how we could take care of some of the, the replacement there. of the concrete we can work well, on it if yeah it sounds like a stretch but yeah if it would work why not it would work okay because that's part of quickly on this as carol yes. said it's got a may 18th deadline <coughs> it's got a may 18th and deadline and this was money that wasn't anticipated yep <clears throat> But there's only five communities that can participate. <coughs> so it's really exciting. I mean. To be on the front end of that. Thank yeah, you. well, this is, well, this is what we're, yeah. with the, this is what we were supposed to be doing, but to have it pan out so quick was unbelievable. Right. So that's really exciting. So okay. we'll take care of that. We'll um, but this covers the gap that the federal government, um, it, you know, by put the federal government pulling back its funding. This, the state has stepped in, and we've just been able to take advantage of it, so it's wonderful. That's so that's really good. Okay, um, did you, Board of Health? Okay, um, just, you know, everyone keep checking for ch ticks. Town Administrator's reports. Okay, well, I was gonna talk about that, but you talked about that, um, the vulnerability oh, no. report. That's okay. No, I'm, I wanted you to 
Okay. Well, we're I got good. excited because we're I, good on that one. Because I met, like I said, met with Chris today, and, I, and he's ready to go on it. Yeah, so. he sent this to me, so I'd seen it earlier and told oh, him okay. I, I'll talk with him about it. Um, so, and I gathered what you said tonight, all of you. So, um, uh, you know, we're looking for a new uh, South County Senior Center scene, uh, director, mm -hmm. and we received ten applications. And I think with the boo, we've worked out that the town administrators will take a first look. And Diane Cornwell was here today, and I'll oh, talk about her in a minute. Um, yeah. But she's looked at them, and she's given some feedback. And uh, we'll, we'll, Brian and I are meeting next week, um, Brian Domina, the town administrator in Waitley, to review them and pick those that we think should be interviewed. And I'm deferring to the oversight committee as to how, who's on that committee and how you want to proceed from there. Yeah. And Diane will help with questions as well. Um, so, um, why don't I just talk about Diane for a second? Yes. I think you've I already you say. have talked about her. Um, she well, is um, oh, the retired director of the Bernardston Senior Center, who you've agreed to, and I have a contract for you to sign. Um, you and the Boo have agreed to the Board of Oversight. For, I feel like we should explain what we're saying yeah, at the, our meetings. Is, yes, Board of Oversight. The, the Senior Center Board of Oversight has decided to contract with her, agreed to contract with her. She's been enormously helpful so far. She has a lot of great ideas, um, and um, I'm sharing with her lots of information that I think will be really helpful for the growth and development of the Senior oh. Center. Um, but we have a contract uh, in front of you, or I have it right here for you to sign if you um, mm -hmm. I feel and like we've got we just the scope need of services in your folder so you can see what, what we've come up with. I feel like we just need to, just for a couple minutes, where, where this all came from, is Trevor and I last year yeah, had you gone talked up about this at to, the senior, yeah, <laughs> to a senior center. And um, Berniston has a five-day-a-week program. They have transportation. Um, they just do so much. And Diane has been able to find grants and knows what's going on. And so it's really important for us. I think for us to do this master plan of senior services and work hopefully the $25,000 for the church senior center feasibility study will pass at town meeting and she will do a master plan of senior services that will identify the space needs for programs as we move forward and then we can look at, at once we get the church we'll be able to look at the church look at the senior you know current senior center and figure out what we're going to do for space requirements and mm -hmm. move forward and use our CPA money to fix up the buildings and have senior housing. And I mean, I just am really excited. So yep. this this seems to be really, she she's really you, wonderful. And I think she can work with the senior center really well. So if you agree to the scope of services, here's the contract. I'll make a, make a motion to sign the contract for scope of services for consulting services for South County Senior Center with Diane Cornwall. I'll second the motion. Cornwell, thank you. Is there any further discussion? Nope. No. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. I think you're the only one who needs to sign it. Yeah, which yeah. is... Okay, I'll just... Um, just want to give you a heads up that there is a meeting scheduled for next week because we have that poll hearing that's been rescheduled mm -hmm. and we also have another license hearing and that's for Cheslick's market okay so um, and Ver next Kevin point. has um, a number of other issues he'd like to talk with you about so I've got those on your agenda as well okay. if there's anything else let me know that'll be the second I also no, just that's want the first right? second we're gonna do it on the first. Mm. yeah we were gonna do it on the first because um, uh, no, Trevor can't be here. It has to be. It's a public hearing. It has oh, to be on oh. those dates. I thought you had it. They're in the newspaper. I thought um, you had already known that we moved that, but that's fine. Okay, then I'll skip that. All right, I'm good. We These were said a long time ago. I did set it uh, two weeks we, ago, I told you, but that's fine. It's okay. We're good. But the ads were already placed. No, they weren't, but that's okay. It's all right. Wendy, it's okay. Okay. I had the second, though. Yeah, I never heard no. the first. Uh, well, yeah, we brought it up a while ago. But you know what? There's so much going on. We need Don't to worry. vote on these things, too, because um, if we just mention them and not vote, they may not get into the minutes, and, mm -hmm. and then um, we can't blame each other. <laughs> we'll just no say, okay. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. We'll, All right. We'll have a meeting, a quick meeting at 6 o'clock. Um, no. Okay. Okay. Because is these, that our, yeah. No, I, I'm, I won't be here on the second, but that's but, fine. Okay. That's All fine. Right. I'm okay. Feed into, feed into, you know, do give us your input ahead of time. I will. Please I will. do. No problem. Um, 
Oh, keep it keep it to a light agenda for that. We'll probably do some because um, the first we have to keep set aside for ta second night of town meeting. Okay. So we couldn't meet then unless you met earlier. But at any rate, these were long scheduled. Okay, right. let's move on. Let's move on. Okay, so um, we were likely, and this is where uh, what you were bringing up before kept. Um, need to have a special town meeting um, before mid-July um, for we need town authorization for the closings uh, for the um, the sale of the town owned property in order to use the proceeds to pay down the debt we have to do that within 90 days of receipt of the money so really? yes so um, we closed on the Baker property New England Natural Bakers last week and you've got that yep. letter and the amount I think that I was paid pay off for that um, shouldn't use the term pay off but paid for that um, and we expect the closing on parcel C hopefully to happen within the next several weeks um, I need to get on top of our requirements for expedited permitting make sure we do all that correctly um, I know that they were doing the 20 money they were scheduled to do the environmental uh, assessment on that property per the mm -hmm. bank requirements. But you had something you wanted to say about all that? Well, if the, the towns receive that money, it just get put into the general fund. And if there's adequate funds, does it really matter? Who's to say what check went to pay off that loan? Do you know what I'm saying? Um, I don't believe we can use any old money to, I think we have to directly you know ask permission to pay off that loan. yes well mm -hmm. and yes we have to do yeah. that within 90 days we have to get authorization to do that from town meeting yes to pay it off. yes apparently huh. this was something that came up in 2014 okay and Barbara had spent a bit of when the borrowing happened or when you signed when you did is that when you signed with uh, New England natural bakers so there was knowledge of this uh, and discussion about this in 2014. It's because we have been paying $130,000 of our operating budget goes towards the debt. debt. And so what we want to do is take the money from the sale, both parcels, and yes. And the finance free committee up. has asked that. Asked they that free up. That. Yeah. Yes, yeah. they free very strongly. Up that operating budget money. Well, not, and the only way we can do that is to pay yeah. off, get permission to pay off that note. Well, I did the I did some math uh, today, and it, we we would save a, about thirty four thousand dollars a year in interest alone by paying that down. So Absolutely, yeah. it's it's a good benefit for us. Yeah. Well, and it yeah. also frees up our, our money in our operating budget, which it, well, you know true. is is important as well. Right. So. I, I think it's, I mean, we want, I think there isn't anybody that questions that we should pay it off. Right. It's just that we do need to have a, <coughs> okay. so we have to go down. Yeah. Okay. So, and okay. so the and clock is ticking that. because yep. last week was the first closing and hopefully, yep. it was, so but the mid-July will be the third, you know, 90 days. So we're not dealing with the uh, first closing at this town meeting because it was too, we, it was didn't know if it was going to happen. Right, exactly. <laughs> yes. So we're going to so deal with it all. Both, both of them. Both of them Correct. Perfect. Okay. Okay. So, um. I have before you tonight, and we'll hand out tonight a the guide to town meeting, which has the warrant with the motions. And um, um, we were going a bit around the, quite late this afternoon on getting the motions finalized for, relative to the marijuana article. So I popped those in. We may need to look at those; they may be a little off. So mm -hmm. we'll, we'll do that tonight because I'm planning to bring it to the copier place in the morning to make 350 copies for town meeting. Okay. Anticipating a crowd. Unless Good. you so. think, have other thoughts about that. Um, I was going to talk a little bit about the liquor license issue, um, but we can do that when we go through and you mm -hmm. assign the uh, motions if you would like to do okay. that then. That's fine. Um, that, I'll stop here. <clears throat> so do we want to do the um, conflict disclosure and the uh, police cruiser? Yeah, why don't we just vote, why don't we go down, why don't we do the next three things? Right. Um, we acknowledge this conflict disclosure, the vote on the um, police cruiser, and the comment on the appeal. And CBA then free appeal. Us up to work on the warrant. Yeah, and then we can just okay. go back and do the warrant. Okay. Um, so. Do we actually, we just acknowledge the conflict? Disclosure, right? When um, do we not vote? You make on a determination anything? and um, and sign it. 
you, you can read that determination there. Um, yeah, I've seen this. Mm -hmm. And I did, re I did ascertain what does need to happen at a public meeting since it's Do you want me to read this page? A group. Yeah, I guess okay, so. Okay, so let me read the page. Dis disclosure by non-elected municipal employee of financial interest and determination by appointing authority as required by uh, general law chapter 268A section 19 municipal employee information. So uh, this is for chief, um, chief of police, uh, municipal agency is the town of Deerfield Police Department, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass. Um, uh, this is for Ch Chief John Pachurik. My duties require me to participate in a particular matter, and I may not participate because of a financial interest that I am disclosing here. Uh, I request a determination from my appointing authority about how I should proceed. The particular matter is I've been advised that my parents, uh, John and Sharon Paturk, have invested funds in the Sugarloaf Condominium Project, thereby creating a financial impact of a direct family member. As Chief of Police, our agency has been receiving noise complaints and traffic control complaints from abutters. I deal with each and every situation in a fair, neutral, and independent manner. Um, so the issues are that um, immediate family member has a financial interest in that matter. And, um, and that is it. So determination. Um, you can read that determination. So the determination by the appointing authority as a uh, appointing official as required uh, by general law chapter 268A section 19. I have reviewed the particular matter and the financial interest identified above by a municipal employee. I have determined that the financial interest is not so substantial as to, deem, uh, as to be deemed likely to affect the integrity of the services which the, mis the municipality may expect from the employee. And this is for um, Chair Carolyn Ness to sign. So you would vote to authorize her to sign if so you I'd, find that. I make a motion to authorize Carolyn S. Chair to sign the um, conflict conflict uh, determination. Disclosure. I'll second the motion. Is there any further discussion? None. None. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, then the next item is to vote to dispose of the surplus cruiser. I thought there was two cruisers. There, I think they got rid of one. Oh, um, they already did? Okay. Yeah, sure. So this is um, just one? This is another one. I, yeah. Cool. Well, I thought there were three, actually, and they got rid of two, and this is one. I, I'm I mean, not really sure. I thought, there was, uh, I thought there was two this week. No? No, it hasn't. I saw it said two cruisers, but that's right. Yeah. yeah. How about I make a motion to authorize the police department or whoever to dispose of the surplus police cruisers? Yeah, let's, Second. let's, let's make it pl plural. plural. Just in case. Just yep. in case. Yep. Um, is there any further discussion? No. None. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, the ZBA comment form for an appeal, I just, it's not really our purview, so my, my suggestion would just be no, no comment. comment. I have no comment. Well, they, you know, this came around and I said you don't have, um, I don't they want, yeah. you had a different thought about it. Um, I don't, I, we don't really have any jurisdiction, so I, I no. so this is. Uh, no comment. Yeah. yeah. Just to clarify, this is. So um, appealing the building commissioner's letter dated. And I've read the letter and, um, and so this is just for him to go before the uh, CPA, right? Yeah. For an appeal? Yeah about water issues and I, so I leave it up to them I yeah don't, I, don't I mean know. I don't once I don't you get involved in I don't know water about, that's about not the a, issue yeah. so I don't want to comment no I don't want it I think it's better to say no comment yep yep okay so we're all set on leave that um so then we'll go back to the first item which is to um talk about our town meeting um uh, motions and what? uh talk about our town meetings, emotions assignments and information night tonight okay um, so this is wendy gave us the most up to date most current yeah what did i have <clears throat> truly hot off the pass <laughs> do you have one yes 
Yeah. So yeah. how do we want to do this? Um, I don't think I know. That would save no, I it to you. some money. No. I, I don't. Remember, I came out. I mean, and there save you some time <laughs> because I don't really think we have to go through and read all this. What I was thinking was. Um, well, we need to kind of position who's going to read each one of the meetings. Yeah. The yeah. Yes, yeah. we need to do that. You but I was um, going to talk about the budget and just you know go over this kind of stuff, but. Um, sh we can assign the motions right now if right. you want. Okay. You, you know, you could use um, page six. Page six. Which thank has you. the table oh, yes. of contents of the motions. Oh, great. Um, but if you'd like to look at them before I, you, I, yeah, I think you make a commitment, okay. go right yeah. ahead. Okay. Um, and if you'd like to talk about any now, um, before we have the. Uh, seven o'clock session. Let's do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. I expect that the liquor license and the marijuana will be the most complicated. I think the CPA may be another issue. Mm -hmm. um, so, just saying. Gotcha. Just saying. So, which ones in the beginning does the moderator do? They do the. They read the first one, then we make the motions. Is that correct? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I'll do the first one. Um, I, <laughs> um, I think the moder doesn't the moderator do the first I believe one? they do. Yeah. That's because that's moderator's motions. Yeah. yeah. And then we move on to Article 2. Yeah, um, Kip, you can't. Because oh, oh. that is the moderator. Right. See that at the above? So do you want to just eeny, meeny, No, I don't see that. We get down to All right, the moderator. That somebody wants? Oh no, it's not actually. I'm sorry. I don't think so. I stand correct. We we stand corrected. No, it's um, the opening that the moderator does right. in an Article One motion. Kip has. Oh okay. right. Yes, yes, exactly. It's Down not an article. The opening. Yep. Okay. So, but the the moderator reads the article, and we just read the motion. Um, I'm not. No, or does he not so. even read it? Does no. he just say Article One? Yeah, because we hand I've this out to once. everybody. Oh. Yeah. We hand this out to everybody. Okay, so Kip, you got number one. Okay. But he might read, I don't know. And then I'll take um, two. Well, Carolyn. What? Let me ask you. Does, it, does the moderator usually read the article or just say Article 1? Um, and when he says Article it, 1, he then. He paraphrases a bit. Okay. I think it depends on the length of the article. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, um, so, Kip, you're doing number one. Right. one. Um, Trevor, you're doing number two. Okay. Um, number three, I'll Happen. do. Okay. Uh, which is the gifts. Um, huge thank you for those. You could do yeah. a few in a row if they're sh small, too. Yeah. Right now, so. um, okay, number four. This is Kim. Kip, do you want to do number four? Sure. Okay. Number five. No, just so I understand. <clears throat> I read the entire thing, all of the, their names and the dollar amounts as well. Um, uh, actually, number f on four yes. or number two? Four is the Dickinson Library Trust Fund. Oh, I'm, I'm number number three is mine. I'm sorry. Yep. And um, you're all set? I'm already made mistakes. Okay. First one. I'm not helping. Number you four. Either. Okay. Revolving funds? I'll do that. Four. Um, so then the revolving funds is uh, Trevor. As five. Six. Oh, I'll do, I'll do six. Six. You want? Yeah. Okay. Why don't you say for the, I'm, I'm getting, I'm becoming more mindful of people watching at home who don't necessarily know what we're talking about. Okay. If you wouldn't mind saying what the article's what about. Are. Sure. Yeah. So um, article five is to see if the town will vote uh, to fix maximum amount uh, that, that may be spent during um, FY 2019 beginning July 1st, 2018 for the revolving funds established by the town bylaws for certain departments. So the, um, this would be for the recycling program will be 20,000, the parks and recreation will be 75,000 and planning will be 25,000. And these are, these are funds that we take in money during the year and then get expended out for different programs throughout the year. So these are just kind of fixing the limit of spending that goes out of those accounts. Um, um, uh, we will put this on the website. Um, hopefully we'll have all the formatting and everything worked out by late tonight and it will Great. go on the website. Perfect. So okay. I'll, I'll do number six. I'm, and, I'm reading six. Oh, yeah. and, okay. So 
Um, I'll do number seven, which is the classification so, compensation, compensation plan. And then to back up, uh, I, 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 Article six, um, is to see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate transfer from available funds um, or otherwise provide a sum or sums of money for other post-retirement, other and post-employment benefits, liability trust. Um, so this is a trust that we've established this year to um, start to put money aside to pay for retirees insurance and other other liabilities um, that we accrue each year. And we're, we're accruing about $442,000 a year in liability for our retirees now and people that are working now that are building this liability or this benefit uh, throughout their working time. And we're only paying off what we currently have for retirees, which is 175. So every year we're going into, we're building up our liability by $225,000 a year. So it's just, it's, it's about an $8 million liability right now and it grows at $225,000 a year. Um, we recommended uh, a policy to put 4% of our current, and this is not enough prior, in my mind, but yeah, of our current amount years. that we're yeah. paying for the prior year yeah. on our insure, on, on the benefit we're paying for our retirement. So 4% of $175,000 or so is, um, is, is $35,000, 200, $35,278 for this year, which is woefully inadequate. Um, the Finance Committee recommended $10,000. Um, you know, again, I keep working on this item year after year to try and get that amount up um, because that whole, that mountain gets bigger every year. So that's kind of where we're at. Did you say the total liability was? Did you say $8 million. Eight million? Eight where did that million. number come from? From, our, uh, from the actuary who comes and does a study of how many people we have right now that are retired and how many people that are working each year and what the benefit we're going to have to pay on them as they live longer and they retire, say a, somebody retires at 55 or 60, right. the amount you have to pay them until they get on Medicare. Right. And so that amount just grows and then the cost of the plans and then if we're not investing the money, if we have no money to invest. So there's all these different numbers that kind of come together to affect that liability. And we could make a big difference on that if we start paying, Pain. But, putting money aside. But in fact, isn't that, that liability is an accumulation of time, but every year, so far, the town has always paid these costs going forward. They've only paid for what, um, for our current retirees, but have right. not put any money aside for the f for the, what, we're, what we have coming up. Mm -hmm. And that li that delta grows every year. Right. So, so you, uh, you'll get to a point where you'll never cover mm -hmm. the difference. You're going to get to a year mm -hmm. where you'll have um, four hundred thousand dollars that you have to pull out of your operating budget to pay for that. And we're just but it's it, it's gonna it's a figure that's a constant moving target. It, and, it constantly and right. moving, growing. Right, yep. but at some point it will level off because there's an assumption. Well, people don't live forever, so Correct. there's an assumption if we have so many employees that you know as the new ones come on, others are gonna you know pass on. You know what I'm saying? So well, they they will, but. Yeah. But at some point, I mean, that, that is $225,000 a year right now as that grows. So it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So eventually, out the, so the plan is, is they look at a 30-year funding plan right now. You could pick any year, but that's kind of the industry standard is 30 years on how much you're, um, how long it would take to fund this. Right. And so it would be, um, th that's kind of how they're looking. And so the number is growing over that 30-year span. Right. Um, I've got I've got the report which I could give you, but yeah. um, and we're going to have another one done this year. Yeah. We're required yes. to under it the Gatsby standards. It was one in 2016, standards. and yeah, with the new Gatsby standards. So we'll 75. have new numbers. It's, um, but we've been really underfunding. I mean, and, and so is everybody. Uh, but I, really, no, everybody. Well, 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 not everybody. But <laughs> the state has, if you recall, at the yes. Select Boards Association meeting, um, Representative we, Kulik said that they've been doing that, and they're now having to really catch up. And, they've got to catch up. And again, that's a whole different scale than we're at, but right. still, yeah. it's the and same. If you're, if you're Wellesley, kind of you thing. can drop, you know, four hundred thousand dollars in like that, and well, have, you know. But I don't want to spend a lot of time on this. But of, of recently, that you know, I see this as you know, the state has, if you will, sounded the alarm on this growing number, and. I'm not saying that they are, but it's almost like there's a, a, an idea out there that, well, what's the state going to do if the towns can't handle this? Yeah. And a prime example is what's going on in Northampton right now, 
right. with the, the, hug. The, the hug hug. Okay, yeah. everybody's been paying into this county thing and they're paying. Well, there's a good chance that organization might not be around. So now there's going to be a lot of people out there. What happens to their retirement? Who's going to pay it? Absolutely. So the HACOG is now sending letters to all the people in Hampshire County saying, you're going to owe this, and, you're, and they're, now they're trying to push it back onto the towns. Right. So, you know, that, it, it is a, it is a, a problem. It is or a huge problem. problem. We, have to, yeah. we, have to, we have to address it because, you know, it's our future generation. And that's that's actually retirement costs, not just health insurance. Oh, yeah, but yeah sure. Retirement. Yeah. Yep. So anyway, so yep. that, that's where we're at there. Um, so, and then you're doing seven, is that right? So I'll do seven, which is a classification compensation plan. All right. My turn. And then Kip is doing number eight. Omni number omnibus eight? budget. Okay. To eight. Yep. You get the whole enchilada. And, and just to let you know, I'll be, be before the meeting, get a better menu for you so that you're, you know, you'll have something easier to read than okay. in this book. Okay. Sure. Um, Has it? No. Number mm -hmm. nine uh, is the um, establishing the sewer enterprise fund. We pr we probably should um, we to because you're on the you're bit. on the sewer or we're on the sewer committee. Do you want to do this one or do you? Is want that number nine? Yeah. yeah. I can do it. Sure. Okay. Um, no, um, but we we need we, we need to is. explain why we want to make it an enterprise fund versus just sort of an sort of an enterprise fund because we, we should. treated it <laughs> let me just as leave it at that yeah. sort of <laughs> enterprise fund which really means it's be. separate from um, the town budget so in other words it's paid for by user fees this would formalize it I guess would be the easiest way to say it are we we're only establishing one enterprise fund right all but the with, funds and but within be, that you we could do, at a later date do different things do different yeah. districts yeah. That doesn't limit us in Not that way. Districts or, or management areas. With right. Some, areas. some issue with calling them districts. Well, I just thought it would be better to call them management areas because districts yeah. get confused with separate, sure. like the water. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. You, so you we, call it district, we, but okay. it, it, it's confusing talk to people about, um, in this town for that reason. The formalization yeah. of, do of what we're doing now is um, the sewer enterprise fund into man, and then we could talk about doing management areas at mm -hmm. some point. Okay. You want to do 10 as well? And I guess, yeah, he would, Kip would do 10 too because that's the, okay. the funding for the, the item. Okay. Can we do 11? I can do that. Um, um, 11 is SCEMS. Do you want to do that? Sure. Okay. But before we go for it, I would just read that motion. I don't go into all of the figures, just like on the one before. Um, right. You would it, say I don't, you're you don't want me to read all of these. This is the budget for the 809. Yep. 809,612 is the budget for the sewer okay. enterprise yep. fund. I'll guide you. I'll Put it on the for you. And, um, so would I do the same for this, the omnibus budget? Um, the omnibus. Just say the dollar. The omnibus. He'll read. Omnibus. He'll read that whole thing. He'll put it up, and then everybody, and then he goes yeah, line by line. Yeah, we're gonna have it up. Okay. And then it, yeah, he'll go line by line, and people will do a hold or not a hold or whatever <laughs> on it, and then he goes back to it. So right. you probably won't have to do much on that. Typically. Actually, the moderator reads that. Right. Uh, you you read this motion and the moderator goes from there. Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, so, eleven is the South County EMS. Yep. We'll and do you're that. just going to move the budget, the total budget. Right. And then Article Twelve is um, capital, so Which I'll you'll do, do capital. That. Yep. Um, and that's talking about um, three hundred forty-nine thousand eight hundred ninety-five thousand from. Um, <coughs> Free cash. From the roadside mower <coughs> is paid for by Eversource. Right. That's separate. Um, Article 13 is um, for tractor. the tractor for um, Frontier. Do you want to do that, Trevor? Sure. That, that passed in uh, Waitley last night, by the way. Okay. Did it? Mm -hmm. And they didn't make any adjustments to it. Not that I'm aware of. But I, I, watched I, the I meeting, read it but in the newspaper. No, so I'm, I'm just curious because I. I I, th I think that I might address that, that I, okay. I, I think that $36,000 for lawnmowers is excessive. So you'd and have a written that it motion? Would be, it would amend. amend the amount to buy the lawnmower, yep. to buy the mower, but not all of those attachments. Just so write it ahead of time. Ahead of time. Make yep. it handier. Yep, exactly. Well, um, 
if you we need to talk about that because yeah, I think be, that all four oh, communities all four towns have you to. have to vote this uh, is why I always ask yep. them to give us the language That's because right. we have to vote the same language is this the same language? Conway had suggested adding add attachment all att add attachments to this language in the Warren article and the school got came back and said leave it the way it is so we all put it on the warrant this way just this way and well, i don't know what that means um if we amend it any town votes any kind of different language i think what two uh <coughs> two of the three or three of the so three, three, three have to pass it <coughs> if three pass it it doesn't matter uh, the school point? folks might be here for this session tonight oh, at seven so, so that ask. we can address that with okay. them directly and they can so i'll i'll take that article anyways and, and then you right. could always so or do you want to take it kip or do you or do you want to just make the amendment on it? No, I'd rather it? you okay. do it, and then I can that. do it. Yep. Yep. Because it sounds kind of, oh, you know, sense. I read it, I move it, and then it's like, oh, wait, I don't really mean that. I'm going to change okay. it. Okay, that's fine. It <laughs> yeah. happens a lot, by the way. I know. I, well, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not talking about you. <laughs> can okay. I address the next one? Yes, before please. You go into it? Okay, yep. this, the next one is for stabilization <clears throat> fund, and in, in here it says capital expenditures. Stabilization fund. Um, as you know, we discussed putting all $500,000 in there as the... Um, Capital Improvements Planning Committee suggested. You voted to do that. The Finance Committee wasn't deciding. And then they decided to split it between capital stabilization and regular stabilization. Both of these funds can be used exactly the same way. Both of these funds can be used anyway, basically. But I think there's an intention when you say stabilization, you're putting it away. It, it's supposed and to be used for, as Diana would say, a rainy day. <laughs> and it needs a two-thirds two -thirds vote. Thirds and it needs a two-thirds vote. Right, to um, take out. It, after a bit of discussion, we've um, come up with a motion which allows us to uh, split it into the two funds, as okay. the Finance Committee had wanted to do. So um, that's what's on here. Okay. And again, the capital could pull from that if they needed to, from either one. Yes. Okay, so to, you're going to do fund 14. capital projects. Yes. yes. Town Still with the two-thirds vote at town meeting. Okay. So I'll do 14. I'll do 15. Um, snow and ice, okay. Trevor, do you want me to do the community preservation? Um, I know a lot of times. Community um, preservation will be done by the, by the moderator, right? No, um, oh. the, by, Alan, by the chair of that committee. Oh, Alan right. Sweetland. It used to be. Used yeah, to be. I think Alan is right. going to do okay. that. Okay, so I'll put Alan. Unless they decide to do it different. Well, because Dan Graves was the chair. Of right, the that's CPA. why I think. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, do you want me to do seven? I mean, 17 billion. Really it's a it dollar. Is? Say what it's it is. Expender. Okay, so uh, Article Seven. You don't have to read the whole thing. Just the right. It's the motion is yeah. to um, is to transfer from free cash one dollar <laughs> for funding of the tuition and transportation expenses for Smith Vocation. We we didn't have a student this year, so we keep the fund open. Oh, so. In the event we do. In the event we do. <laughs> right. You never so, know. Well, so hopefully we're not. Um, so Trevor, are you going to do that? I'll do that. Yep. Article um, Seventeen. Already well, lost his mic. Uh, Eighteen is um, reserve fund. Reserve fund. I'll do that if you want. Nineteen. Uh, that's the transferring of the reserve money for um, to the finance committee to um, make sure in case there's any kind of um, problems that crop up or Is shortfalls. Or are you uh, talking eighteen still? Eighteen. Oh, okay. Um, nineteen is. Uh, I'll let you do nineteen. I'll do twenty. Okay. okay. Um, <laughs> yes. So we What's are passing 19? over that. Uh, just we decided. This is the one that we had to do last year in order for the assessors to go forward with a five-year contract for their quinquennial. Okay. Uh, and they don't really, they don't need to do it this year, but if we have it on as a Warren article and we pass over it, it remains on our radar so yeah. when they do this again. So 19 we're going to pass on? Yes. Yeah, so you, okay. Kip, you are going to do 20? No, I'm going to do 19. Oh, so you're, we're going to do both? We're gonna, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And you're going to pass on. Kip is going to 20. Now, what did you, what, I, I'm sorry, I was, did you say we're going to pass over 19 we're, altogether? Yeah, we're going to move to pass over 20. Okay. Okay, so. 20. So. No, that's no. for assessors to enter to contracts up to five okay. years. Okay. Yeah. Right. So we're moving, um, we're going to move over. So do we don't need anyone to assign that or to, to skip that? I thought, I thought, I'll, I'll just, just, I'll, yeah, I'll I'll thought he jumped I'll up to do this because it was a good, easy Yeah, it was one. like, well, that's easy. <laughs> okay. All right. We're just, Okay. We just explained that. I'm confused. So 20 is Kip. Kip, Kip is gotcha. going to explain that we're not going to, we're going to pass over this On because, 20, because there is 19. no need to do a contract gotcha. with the assessors he this year, but we're going to keep it on our town meeting radar so we don't forget it. 
Okay. Um, on a year that we need to do it. Yeah, unfortunately, it, it's one of those you do have to meet, uh, do every year as opposed to once you do it, you're set. Right. So we're keeping yeah. it there. And in the past, last year, didn't we have a little column where there were some remarks already concluded for us? I think there was. I'm sorry, I don't know what you mean. Uh, uh, under the, after we read the motion, there was some talking points as to. Yes, you know, we can do that. Yes. Okay. I, yeah, she's going to work on. So I guess I'll do 21, which is um, really a housekeeping one. It allows mm -hmm. us to um, manage abandoned, simplify the abandoned funds. Yes. That's. Requested by the collector. Un yes, unclaimed I checks. The, I, I, I don't think the there's very much money involved, act. is there? Okay. Right. Um, 22 is to um, talk about work clothes and attire. Apparently, we have not um, accepted the bylaw where we could. Um, statute. There's a statute that provides for um, funding for our highway crews. So, okay. So, this is to clean that up. It, this is Bruce. Bruce brought this forward, right? Bruce brought I don't, this it, Well, he asked for it, and we put it on. It, yeah. you, it's, you, it's yours. It wasn't yeah. a petition article. No, no, article, I just thought he was, we need, he was we need to do it, it to make. It. Yeah, right. we need to do this. Okay. But I don't know when Bruce was showing it to me. It said something specifically about foul weather or clothes, not just well, the, work clothes. This I, is the I, summary here. Um, what page is that? I'm, I'm just following the. Uh, Table of contents. So, what are article? It's uh, article 22, 22, which would be General Laws, Chapter 40, this, Section This says 6J we can. That's what. So we can work clothes and related attire. That's so we can buy the boots, and because the other one said just foul weather gear. So, in other words, oh. we could only buy raincoats. Oh. Well, I will. So would have I, to see I, what I was thinking. Chapter that, six. Does it really limit it to raincoats? I mean, it well, says follow no, weather. Look, I can have the, the chapter. I yeah, can have the, the section section six there L and six J. All right. And I'll okay. highlight okay. it. We'll do that. Yeah. That's the way Bruce. So, okay. Okay. are you doing? Right. Who's doing that one? Do you want um, me to do that? Yeah. Right. Okay, Trevor. Okay. Trevor All right. Um, Twenty-three is. I'll do the mosquito district. Um, that 23 is just so we can join the Mosquito District for initial one year, no cost. Yeah. Okay. Um, 24 is. Um, I can do that. I probably, if I don't have some good talking points. I, I, I will give you some tonight. And okay, I'll, 24 I will do. Okay, okay. let's skip. Um, yeah, because this is going to be the complicated one. This mm -hmm. is on um, whether we want to authorize additional licenses for liquor. Yep. And I think we need to explain to people, um, you know, what kind of liquor licenses we're talking yeah, about, talk about the, different, the different kinds. And but wasn't why. it primarily off-premises? It is. It is. is. Yeah. But okay. And it isn't that we have a demand that we want them now. We just want the ability to ask for them if the occasion arises. Well, we actually have... Only we have three applicants for two left, right? Mm -hmm. four, so for the <laughs> oh, four, four for three. Four for three. Four for three. They oh, all four. came in very yeah. quickly. Four yeah. for three. Okay. Yeah. Who is the other one then? The market. The oh, bakery. Oh, oh, I forgot. Okay. The two mar the two markets. The international yep. markets. But if, if it maybe it was three. But we. Yeah. I guess my question is, we haven't established that we're actually going to grant all four because it, it's still there's a, a discretionary thing there. Oh, and at this point, to to at this point, you're going to have to make a decision yeah, about sure. after whether after we any have of them, them right. or which of the three, if you decide to grant the right. remaining exactly. license. Once, once exactly. we see, once we have all the hearings. Yeah. But this primarily is just this is a move to allow us the flexibility in the future if we want some, because this is a process more. that we have to follow. correct. Okay. Otherwise, we have to wait till next year to even yep. start the process. I correct. Get it. Yep. Um, 25 is the marijuana. It's the tax. So it's 25, 26, and 27. Okay, so I'll do the tax. Okay, let me explain something. <laughs> when you asked to move the prohibition to the after the zoning bylaw, yep. I did that. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I thought that there was one prohibition and t by um, article and two zoning articles related to zoning. Well, yeah. no. <laughs> it's a little complicated. The, um, one of, there were actually two prohibition articles, but I didn't line them up properly. So we have a little convoluted process. That's the motions are seeking to do that. So let's just talk about that for okay. a second. What we're going to do is uh, Council Lisa Mead will do uh, before we go to voting on any of this, moving, making the motions. She's going to get up and explain the regulations as they are 
you know, particular to a Deerfield situation and what's coming up, what's going forward, and why we would propose to move um, forward in the order of the articles mm -hmm. that we're going to get, which won't be straight away. So if you go to that part of your guide here, um, first is the tax. Right, that's correct? pretty straightforward. That's straightforward. Yeah. It's the following three. So um, the you move you to motion 26. on, so after you move to, on the tax one, mm -hmm. after you vote on that, then you can move to defer Article 26 because that's one of the prohibition ones. Um, yeah. No, wait a minute. That is, yes, that's one of the prohibitions. So one I didn't realize was prohibition. I only thought the one that's right. Okay. Twenty six. Move that to defer that until after twenty seven and twenty eight. Okay. Okay. Yep. That's so fine. whoever makes the article twenty five motion, you'd be making it for twenty five, and then to defer twenty six and twenty seven. I mean twenty six um, until 20. after twenty seven and twenty eight. So I'm happy to well, do any. I'm just of these. curious. Why wouldn't we just renumber them and make twenty six and twenty eight? Because they've already been posted on the oh, warrant okay. in that order. Yeah. So yeah, I'm sorry because so, I didn't catch that. So you're going to do. Nobody else caught it either. Do you so want me to do any of these? So I take responsibility. So you're Trevor. You're going to do twenty six. Okay. Well, that'll be. But we won't. Well, be who's doing twenty five? Carolyn, I think. I'm going to do the tax. So that's two. Then you would also do the second motion, which is to defer. That makes okay. sense. So okay. So you'll do both okay. of those. I'll do Carolyn. 27 and 28. Carolyn. Or, or 27 or what? How many? Does anybody else want to dig in on this? Okay. So let's just these? go to Article. Um, 27. 27. Yeah, so, no, um, 26 right now. Well. Yes. 27. 27. I'll do. If, okay, so read the motion. I'll okay. Look at it right now. Okay, the motion is uh, I move the town amend its zoning bylaw, aka Chapter 179 of the town code, by adopting the modifications identical to that language as written in the printed materials provided under Article 27 of the 2018 annual town meeting handout. And then do you want me to read all the items? I mean, I would, right? In the meeting. Um, I don't think you'd have to read them all. No, okay. no. Um, it refers as printed out. Okay. Yes, it says um, identical. That language is written in the printed materials. Are you, I'm on 27. Would you reading 27 or 26? 27. So it says no, refer read, to your materials. I'm reading 27. He's reading 27. Okay, so I'm sorry. I didn't catch who's doing 26. Uh, well, we didn't get there yet. Right. Correct? We didn't get there. Okay. doing 25. All right. So you're going to do 27. I'm going to do 25. Sorry about that. And then we're going to defer. Do, do, 26 till right. after 27 and, and 28. And do you want me to do, it's somebody else want to do 28 or do you want me to do both? Well, why don't you do both so that it's. Okay. Um, yeah, because they relate, to, those are the two. Um, yep. And then, and then no, we can go Trevor. back to 26, which, does anybody want that or do you want, this oh, is the, you'll do that, Kip? So 26. Okay. Okay. So okay. Then, and again, and Carolyn, you're doing the tax? Yep. Yep. So, so Kip is going to do 26. Okay, 26. and again, this, we're going to have I'll to follow the, the movement and the votes on this to see if you're actually going to move those things. Right, exactly. All right, and yep. we'll get our cues from the moderator and the no and town council on that. Good. Okay. So then uh, 29. Um, this is the tax agreement for solar I gotta come facility. Back to um, I can do that. Okay. I'm sorry, and who's doing 29? Uh, Carolyn will do that. Okay, so you, you, uh, did you say anything about that? Uh, not yet. I, are we going to go over these again with the committee? I was yeah. just thinking yeah. it's seven, so it's seven. we'd probably cruise through okay. this and then do it okay. all over again. Okay. Um, Let's get them out Right. So Article 30 is a petition oh, okay. article. That's Bruce. So Bruce will read that, right? Yeah. Article 31. Um, is Kip, do you want to do 31? Hang on a second. Uh, sure. Okay. That's just... That and that's everything. Okay. Yep. Okay, so um, we can. I, I, I have a question on. Uh, I, just so I understand, it says this motion may be modified depending on the outcome of Article 27. I don't. That's where we're going to yes. take our cues from. Um, more. Mod moderator and council on, you know, right. as that, we go along on that. Gonna, that line was right at the bottom. Right at the bottom. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yep. Yep. And. Gotcha. Terms. Um, now is that because 27 oh, is a 27? Uh, 
What is 27? 27 is just uh, setting up the, uh, the, you know, adjusting. 27 is the zoning bylaw. It's the zoning, setting that up. Yeah, that's what I thought. So how and, and Article 26 is just So if the, 27 the, didn't pass, right? 26 and 28 are prohibition. They should have 27 been. 27 is a prohibition? No, 26, 26 and 28. I was explaining before that we should have moved uh, 26 behind 27 to so have the two prohibition together. It missed a bunch of eyes. All right. It's going to be a little confusing, but we'll. <coughs> what we're going to do is going to lay the groundwork well, for when it. When we go over this yeah. for the informational night, I'm going to turn this over to you so you can explain <laughs> this, okay? You mean in five minutes? Yeah, yes. five minutes. Five minutes. Okay. okay. I can, uh, I Did can you explain. do Article 30 yet? Yes. yes. Yeah, Bruce is going to. Oh, yeah, Bruce, Bruce does do that. that. Okay, yeah. right. Do 31. Okay. I can, I can explain s some of the um, planning board stuff on there. I don't know if John yeah. Waite is going to be here or not. For the, for the planning, planning board, board stuff. Please. Okay. I think it's worth contacting him to uh, yeah. yes. Yeah. Okay. Because I had whether it would be him or you um, doing this, and uh, council said, you know, since you're on the planning board, and it's the select boards traditionally read these, but if you don't, if you'd rather he do that, that could happen. Oh, no, it, um, I, I have no problem reading it. I, I feel that I'd be better suited to interject about, you know, how these votes went down and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah he wasn't I, there. I, I, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I got a good exactly. handle as yeah, to how it, all, how it all came about, right. so. Perfect. Okay. Yep. Okay, All right, okay. Uh, so we're ready for our Summoning. informational <coughs> meeting session. Um, thank you for coming. And uh, we Welcome, will everybody. Um, start. Oh, good, Lynn is here. Oh, good. Yes. Okay. Lynn. Oh, Lynn, thank you for coming. Thanks for coming. Um, actually, to, to um, Mary and Lynn are both here, so um, why don't we... Um, we could jump down to their well, We water. have the projector yeah. queued up with, with just the, the omnibus budget and the pie chart you would right. ask okay. for. Okay. So yeah. just let that. me know when you want that. Why don't we do that, that so people can look at it. Right. Do we Turn have the, the hand? A bit? Um, yeah, I, I can go through that. Do we have the, a handout of the pie chart? No, we just have it on there. Oh, okay. Will, will we have the handout for the pie chart from the town meeting? Yeah. Um, 350, just, no. no. No, okay. Yeah, the count really right. didn't, and I agree with her, didn't really want. Oh. Oh. Oh, okay. We're, we're going to just show the pie chart oh, for a minute, and then um, that's wonderful. We, we can go, go over that. Okay. Uh, I don't know if people can see this clearly, but... Um, no, I, I, Trevor, can you just? Yeah, the colors are a little different. Yeah. Um, I don't know if we can, there, I don't know if we can, we can't really make it much bigger. But, but we can talk it through. Yeah. Yes. Okay, this, this is the budget that we vote on at town meeting. It's a, this is the 2019 budget. The big section of uh, that pie chart is the ed part that we spend on our education. Um, it's the portion of that we spend on education. This does not include um, the $115,000 that comes off our cherry sheet. In other words, we get local um, uh, um, aid from the, uh, from the state government, and, we, and what is deducted from that is $115,000 for charter school, and then also $137,000 thousand dollars for school choice so if you add the hundred and thirty seven thousand and the hundred and fifteen thousand it's approximately sixty eight percent of our budget is related to school expense and um, Lynn I guess has um, some more details on that that so that's wonderful the next um, going up that yellow is the public works that's about seven percent that's your snow plowing and road maintenance. The next little narrow one is our human services. And um, that's a Board of Health, Senior Center, Veterans Benefits, and um, Veterans Assessment. 
so you can see that we don't really spend an awful lot of money on human services. It's about 1% of our budget. The next part of our budget going up is cultural and recreation, and that's about 2%. That 2% slice um, is the Tilton Library, the SWIM program, the rec director and, um, program, and programs, historic commission, and our Memorial Day expense. So that's, that's that um, slice. It's kind of, um, it's a little bit different color than mine. Um, the next um, big one, it's blue, is the debt service. And um, that's all our principal payments and interest payments for, um, you know, like the school roof that we just um, incurred, Oxford Pickle, that kind of thing. And that's about 4%. The next um, is the 5% is for benefits. It's FERCOG assessment, unfunded sick and vacation time, retirement, workers' comp, unemployment, group insurance, and Medicare tax. That's about 5%. General government is the next one, and that is 7%. Again, our public works, general government, is, is about the same, 7%. And the general government is the select board and the select board expenses, accountant, town accountant, our assessors and their expenses, treasurer, collector, um, their salaries and expenses, our legal advice, contracted services, town clerk, and the town records um, maintenance, to any town office expense, general insurance, and our little boards and committee amounts of money. The next um, um, and last section is about 8%, and that's public safety. That's your police, your building inspection um, expenses, and our um, animal control officer. So that's about 8%. So you see. You can see we, we don't have a lot of discretion to work with here where we deliver services, but we're um, going to explain that we're doing the best we can. This is basically a level services budget. Okay. Um, Lynn? Oh. Lynn, did you want to come up and um, do your... Uh, we can jump down to the schools so you don't have to stay here tonight <laughs> if you want. Lynn Carey is our, you need to come up and introduce yourself, Lynn, because um, people are watching this at home, so it would be very helpful if you Thank came you. up and just and introduced yourself. Good you. evening. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you for coming. Oh. We weren't expecting you. Excuse me, but I don't know if your mics are turned yeah. Yeah. It it might off. Be on. No, I asked them to turn it up, and they did. Oh, I'm sorry. You need to really speak into the mic. <clears throat> Everybody does. Could you not hear me? Not very well. Oh, I'm really mm. sorry. And you can uh, actually should do this, not, yeah. I was right, yeah, no. I had it right here. Yeah, they were. Okay. But, but this not. Um, do you want me to go over it again, everybody, real quick? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no. I guess the no's have it. <laughs> okay, Lynn. Yes. Lynn, you can introduce yourself. Hopefully people can hear you. Good evening. Hi. My name is Lynn Carey. I'm the superintendent of schools. I understand that, and help me if I understand, the budget for the high school and the elementary school are together. Are together over there. Correct. They've been approved by our school committees. Yes. But I am here to ask you if you would like some more information on those budgets and what, what the drivers were to, um, to go up a certain amount. I, I, I don't think we went up that much at the high school. but So they can understand through pie charts exactly where the money for the schools are going. So sure. what, what you have on your mm -hmm. presentation is a discussion of the, the other six, pieces the of the of the 68 percent sure. okay so why don't you yeah. go ahead okay thank you thank you thank you yes thank you 
Thank you, Lynn. And again, thank you for coming. Thank you for inviting us. So we're going to look at Deerfield Elementary School first. I know it's expensive equipment, so I'm careful. <laughs> so you can see that everything we do is about these children here, the children at the bottom. What we do in all of our schools, but specifically we're talking about Deerfield, everything we do is connected to our district mission statement and our vision statement. And you can read for yourself what our mission is. Am I in the way? Yeah. Now you are. <laughs> I wonder if it would work to sit. Yeah. And, and... Okay, I'll try. Right. It might be best to sit. With I that. guess I'll have to sit. Yeah. Would you yeah, do that'd that? Yeah, that would be great. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. No, yeah. I, I actually want... Oh, okay, great. Okay. That's fine. So let me just... Uh, this is what we live by. Everything we do at the school starts with the student at the center, and it comes down from there. Our vision is what, what the, the work that we do together every day for those students. Thank you. So last October, we were... Uh, uh, we presented a strategic plan to the joint school committees, and they accepted it. What we're working on right now, <coughs> because we're in a cycle of continuous improvement, we need to continue, continually to make our schools better. We're working on our instructional practice, assessment and data analysis, and our special education services. And essentially that means we're working on the highest quality instruction available for these kids. We want to build their critical thinking skills so they can be problem solvers, not just people who don't think deeply about problems, that they can really solve problems. We're looking at best inclusionary practices for our students with learning differences that have special education needs. We want to collaborate uh, around personalized learning. Each and every student that comes to us means something and has a life and will become a member of our community and we really want them to learn um, to get that specialized attention in technology and assessment and then we want to monitor their their progress to make sure they're learning what they're supposed to learn what they need to learn and that they're continually growing so this is some of the data that you're looking at this year we have 401 students at the elementary school. Students with disabilities that are actually tested and diagnosed, 88 of our 401 students have some kind of learning difference that makes it hard for them to, uh, to learn. So we have to accommodate and make modifications for that. 27% of our families are economically disadvantaged which means, of course, they're living below a certain level for the number of people in their family. Uh, we have medical and therapeutic person, professionals, seven and a half, our occupational therapists, physical therapists, speech and language therapists, uh, teachers, we have 39 and a half teachers. That means 39 uh, teachers and maybe one that works part-time, like half-time, so these are full-time equivalents. We have instructional assistants. We have 30 of them. Uh, we have two building administrators. We're choosing in this year 76 students are choosing to come to our school. And 21 are, are choosing to go out. And then we, we have charter school. So these are some of the budget drivers that we were talking about. Uh, the increases, salary related costs. The, uh, the cost of the collective bargaining agreement and the, the COLA, the cost of living, that increases $105, uh, $105,000. Teachers go up on steps. The more years they work and then the, uh, the more education they get, they move columns and then they, there's uh, increases. The central office expenses, 
are $13,000. And that has a lot to do with health insurance, as you'll see. Uh, and our health insurance has gone up $10,000 as well. Uh, computer hardware is $15,000 in the school. Sewer charges, $5,320. And transportation, particularly for special education students, and the small increase that we pay every year. Uh, this is the last year of our uh, contract with Gribco. We're going to have to renegotiate next year. And that's $4,000. Some of the decreases we found at at uh, Deerfield Elementary. We saved $15,000 on electricity. We went up $15,000 on hardware, but we're going down $6,400 on software, which is great. Testing and assessment, down $5,000, and other SPED services down $1,500. When we talk about the computer hardware, we have to remember that the state of Massachusetts now has their high stakes, their standardized testing, the MCAS-2, and it's all done on computers now. So we needed to upgrade to be able to serve that need. Um, so the budget overview, the proposed budget for the elementary school is $5,613,939. What we're asking the town appropriation is for $4,720,882. Did I say 5,000 instead of 5 million? I'm sorry. That was a little slip. So the money that we use is 5,613. We're asking the town to help us with 4,702. 4, this is a 2.88 increase over last year, or $132,000 more than what we asked for last year. It uh, supports our salary obligations. We have a collective bargaining agreement, and we, we need to do that. It also supports our operational increases in transportation, sewer, technology, hardware, and central office expenditures. We also have school choice, SPED revolving, early childhood revolving, Title I, and SPED grants, and they provide the extra money that we use. And I'll point that out. I'll show that to you. So that's just the overview. These are the other funds that we do get besides the town appropriation, and this is how we use them. We get $481,000. We have $104,000 from our special education grant, and that pays some of those teachers you saw, instructional assistance, and it does help to pay for some out-of-district placements. We have students that need to go to real specialized schools, but in, in um, Deerfield Elementary, there's only two, and they go, they go to a different school. <coughs> Our special education revolving account helps pay for teacher salaries at $79,000. At Title I, inclusionary specialist position. That is actually a reading specialist that helps uh, students who are struggling with their reading. Early childhood revolving teacher and instructional assistant salaries in support of the inclusive preschool learning. That's almost $200,000. Our program's phenomenal. We're always full. We have kids uh, on a waiting list. They come in, they get a very excellent early foundation, which research is telling you now is so important. There's so much talk about universal pre-K. We're already there doing it. Uh, in school choice, we, I'm sorry, in school choice we get $481,000 and that pays for a, a lot of our uh, classroom teachers and instructional assistant salaries. So the, oops, holy moly, that, that didn't come out well, did it? Uh-oh. Well, I can tell you that buildings, building and facilities is 7%. This is our whole budget for Deerfield. Instruction is 73% out of all the money we use. Our, um, this is administration and this is other, other expenses like transportation and uh, nursing. And this right here is building and facilities. So we, we put 7% there and then I just don't have the numbers. Is it coming out on that one? 
I'll go to the other one and see. Let's see if they're all like that. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, so back to the last one. Let me just be clear on the last one. This is an instruction. This is, nope, uh, the other one. Yeah, there we go. The proposed budget. Okay, going backwards. Camera button. There we go. There we go. Instruction is 73%. Other student services is 5%. Administration, that's building level and central office level is 15%. And building and facilities is 7 the, um, this is the revenue that we bring in. The town appropriation and Chapter 17 funding is 84%. So they, they do support us incredibly. Over here, it's school choice money comes in. That's 8.6%. Here is our SPED revolving at 1.4%. Uh, early childhood at 3.6%. <coughs> Title one. Point five and our SPED grant. So you can see that that extra money, that extra money that we receive fills out the other piece. Uh, this is our proposed budget for, this is what our budget looks like. Mm -hmm. This is the, 50 of the administration. yeah, this is our proposed budget. We're breaking it down into four areas, the four areas you saw before. So our administration is 15% of the whole budget. Building-based leadership and clerical services is 35% of that administration, 15%. Um, school committee legal services, 1%. Superintendent business and finance office, that's the central office, 19%. District-wide information management and technology is 11%. And Insurance, retirement, and other adjustments is 11%. So, okay. This is our proposed budget. Now it looks good. 73% of our budget is on instruction. And how do we spend that 73% of your 86% or you? So, the teachers get 65% of the budget. Medical and therapeutic services, 7%. Those, again, are OTPT, that kind of thing. Guidance, psychology, and services, right here, 3%. Your instructional assistance, 15%. There's a lot of, you know, a lot of concern that we have so many instructional assistants. Out of our 73% of the instructional budget, 15% goes to them, which isn't that major. Our technology hardware, 6%. And our curriculum, special ed, and early childhood directors are 4%. Uh, so then we move on to our buildings and facilities. And again, the maintenance of buildings, grounds, and equipment, 20%. This is only 7% of our budget. Heating and utilities, 37%. Custodian, 37%. And then our networking and telecommunications, telephone bills, um, internet, and then all the wires to do it, that's 6%. So that's how we're breaking it up. These are our other student services, 5% of the budget. Transportation services, food services, our crossing guard, and our health services. We have a full-time RN and a part-time LPN to help take care of the needs of our students. So having said all that, we can't do it without you. What our, school, what our school is, the community and the great things that are happening there and the students that come out of that school and move on and then move into life after that, we couldn't do it without you. It's a great group of kids. It's a great group of, of uh, parents and community. They're so proud of their school. And as, as a person who lives in Deerfield, it should be something that we're all proud of. So. Uh, if there's any questions, I'm sorry it was a little messed up because of the way it printed out. Yes. Hi, I'm Lily White. Um, and I just have a question about the building and maintenance um, monies. Are there, uh, presumably, the buildings are always getting older. Is some of that money being set aside? I mean, is that money being set aside at all for future? Um, 
challenges around that, or do you end up just having to say, we need a new building when it comes time and we have to bite the bullet? Mm -hmm. We're really fortunate because we have um, war, we have a generous town, and we have Warren articles. So right now, one of the uh, one of the projects in the building uh, is to up, take up the old rugs that they thought a generation ago were the best way to have rugs on the floor, um, and take those up and put the tiles back. So a Warren article goes to the town, and they've approved of that, and they we've been working on that. We also have a, a line item in our budget for, um, for maintenance and upkeep that they, do, that they do use if they need it. We also have about $18,000 for, um, we have these yearly alarms that have to be checked, fire alarms, uh, sprinkler alarms. Uh, pest control and all those maintenance things that are input in the budget under, you know, the, the running of it. So as far as the upkeep on the building, we come when we need the extra, when we need a warrant article. The, they did a great job this, uh, two years ago, KIPP and the, and the uh, town. They did a wonderful job working together to put on a new roof on the building, which was badly needed, and it came out, it was a beautiful job. So the, t the community works together to improve the building when it needs to be, when it needs to be done. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. So I have a quick one on Frontier, if you're interested. Yes, why don't we do the Frontier one as well, Is it, if that's all right with everyone. Thank you. Okay, so this is our frontier. I'll go more quickly with this one. It's a great school. We're not just a sports school, you know that. Um, we've been getting a lot of great press for our arts program. People are uh, really noticing. We did a great job, an exceptional job, outstanding with the uh, Wizard of Oz, the other in, our, in March. So again, it's the same thing. We uh, every one of our schools, we have our mission and our vision. These are our kids. These are actually the kids that were on TV with a schools match wits, and they're wonderful. So again, we have our strategic plan. All of this is the same. We follow this for all our students. Uh, here is some of our data. We have 623 students this year. 132 with disabilities, 30% are economically disadvantaged. We have 100 teachers, we have, um, oh, all of our teachers are 100% qualified. We have 56 teaching personnel, 24 uh, educational assistants. We have three building administrators. <coughs> we choice in 160 <coughs> students. That's a, that's a lot of students. 160 students from our surrounding area choose to come to Frontier because of the reputation in the work. 42 choice out, and then there's the charter school. Uh, so then the budget overview, we use 11,754,000. We're asking the town for 11,048,000. And again, this is a 3.09 increase or 331 thousand five hundred nine dollars and it supports the same things our sewer has increased our sewer <laughs> charges transportation and uh, but we also get other funding so again so uh, after that last question we're not going to appropriate eleven million dollars no town of Deerfield no no no. no 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 we get over a million um, yeah that's that's all four towns yeah that's all four towns oh yeah yeah, yeah you only have <laughs> small, but I want to show you what we do with all of it so um, again, we have increases, step increases, longevity, sewer charges, technology devices, health insurance, Medicare tax, and Franklin County retirement. And the decreases are our summer services, our sped tuition, professional services, and other insurances. So again, we get $705,000, 950, $705,950, in outside funding from grants, 100,000 from SPED, 119,000 from special education revolving, 
213,000 from Circuit Breaker. School Choice brings in 229,000, and our Title I is 42,000. And mostly they pay for uh, salaries, salaries, and uh, that's that helps to, to cut. So again, the next one's a little messed up. <laughs> I do have it here. I'm sorry, I don't understand how that happened. Okay. Um, so we have our instruction at Frontier is 49%. Our buildings and facilities is 9%. Employee benefits right here, that's 20%. Tuition to other districts at 7%. Administration is 7%. And then other student services is 8%. And then our revenue sources, our chapter 78 is 24%. Our town assessment here is 70%. School choice gives us 2%. Sped revolving gives us 1%. Circuit Breaker 1.5, 0.4% is our Title I, and then our Special Ed Grant is 0.9%. So, uh, so the administration of the entire budget is 7% of all of what Frontier uses. And that is your building-based leadership and clerical services, 42%. Superintendent Business and Finance Offices, 42%. School Committee, 3%. And then our information, district-wide information management and technology is 13%. Those are the guys that go around, the IT guys that fix everything and put things online. When you have a problem, they troubleshoot it and they fix it, the printers, all of that. Phones. So instruction is 49% of the whole budget at Frontier. The teachers and department heads take 70% of that 49%. We have medical and therapeutic services here, OTPT speech at 4%, guidance psychological services, 8%. And again, our instructional assistance, there's only 10% of the 49% of the whole budget. Uh, special supplies, maintenance, technology, and that is Curriculum and our SPED director is 3%, our curriculum director, and this is <coughs> supplies and materials. Is it 14? Oh, I see 8%. Oh, 5%. So that's what this is. Thank you. Our buildings and facilities, that's only 9% of our budget. And we're very, very well known for the way we. <coughs> Uh, our, our fields outside are tremendously well taken care of. Uh, we have excellent, uh, excellent work done on these fields. We also do Hurley, we do Deerfield Elementary, but there's a lot of work that goes into grooving those fields. 22% of 9% goes for the uh, grounds and the buildings and the equipment, the maintenance. Custodian services, 37%. Again, our networking and communications, 5%, and our heating and utilities is 36%. Other service, other student services, transportation is 51%. Our food services is 2%. Health services is 14%. And athletics and student activities is 33%. So that's... Um, these are additional costs. This is employee retirement and insurance benefits, and that is 74%, and then tuition to other districts, 26%. So this is tuition to other districts at 26%, and then this is the insurance that goes uh, with all of the employees at Frontier. 
And again, we can't do it without you. We're, again, we're a great sports school, a lot of school um, enthusiasm, but we're also developing and really promoting a wonderful arts, fine arts program, an excellent uh, program. And they start very young. If you could see the, the strings concert and the band concert, if these children at the elementary level working and playing with the high school kids, and have a whole complete gym is full of all of these uh, budding uh, musicians. It's amazing to see. So we're again, we're doing great things, and we couldn't do it without you. But every penny is spoken for, and every penny goes into a certain category, and that's that's how we decide how much to add and subtract. So thank you. That's all there is. Is there any questions? Um, for Lynn? Minor one, I don't know the answer. Is school choice money coming in balance the school choice and, and target your school money going out? Well, it takes four students choosing to come in from school choice at $5,000 a student to pay for one student going out to charter school. Right now, we're pretty much balanced, yes. Uh, we are fortunate, more fortunate than most districts in this area because we are a school of choice. People come, they want to come to Frontier. Um, our, our goal, of course, is, is to increase our, what, our enticement to have people come, but we don't want to get so big that we're losing the translation. Right now, the students that we accept are um, they fill out classes. We don't have to have classes just because we have school choice students. The classes are already there. It's not adding to the cost of operating the building. They uh, come in and they merge into what we're already presenting, what we're already offering. So it's a win-win for us. However, the situation is when they choose to go to school choice, it, it does, it takes four, I mean, when it's charter school, it takes four of our school choice students to actually offset the cost, and right now we're about even. We have about 160 coming in, we have about 40 going out, so it does, it, it's sort of a wash right now. And we hope to at least keep it that way and get on the positive end of it. The sum of 5,000 for school choice, how is, how is that determined? By the, the state. state. And this, it was determined years ago. Generations ago. Need to change. No, they have not increased the price. It doesn't account for, the state doesn't account for increasing in costs and so on and so on. No, it's been a flat price. Um, what happens is uh, each community receives money from the state um, based on a complication of a formula. Like Greenfield gets. Um, a little over ten thousand dollars per student. Deerfield, I think, is four thousand something. Um, so, if you have a student in Deerfield, we get four thousand dollars towards um, the price of I think it's seventeen thousand mm -hmm. dollars now to educate a child in Deerfield. Yes. Um, if you send a child from Greenfield into Deerfield, Greenfield has to pay that five thousand dollars to us. So, and then we receive um, 4,000, whatever it is, from the state for that child. It's short of what it actually costs us, but if, it's, if they're filling an empty space in a classroom, that's okay. Greenfield does not receive their, their money, the 10,000. So when you go to do the math, the only real winner is the state because they never pay um, Greenfield, and they only pay us four thousand whatever instead of Greenfield's ten thousand whatever. So, it and they and there is no incentive because the only school choice really only occurs in Western Mass. So there has been no um, interest by the legislature to change that five thousand dollar flat fee, which does not cover our costs. So. We have been really trying to work with the schools to make sure that we are not um, incurring additional costs because of school choice. 
um, teacher, you know, that you would not run an extra classroom, in other words, for school choice children. Because yes, we're receiving money, but it's not covering the true cost of educating. And that includes teachers' salaries, benefits, retirement, the whole thing. So it's very complicated. And um, where we really get burned, and I would say burned, is as Lynn indicated, Sorry. it takes four uh, children to cover a char one charter school out. We have no choice in charter school. In other words, if a child goes to charter school, we just pay. And no oversight. And no oversight, no reporting to us, no, no budgetary um, discussion. They just send us a bill and we have to pay. They, and don't, they don't have a Lynn come and do a presentation for us. And they don't go to town meeting to um, discuss the budget or approve the budget. It's just you're paid out. So in my mind, the charter school situation is, and, and, that, and it costs us when we send a charter school, the charter school, school costs are more than our own costs in our own district. So mm -hmm. it, it's a real, to me, it guts public education in our communities. Mm -hmm. well, Hope. We hope. We'll see. Well, um, that we're a little concerned about that because it it doesn't seem like it's um, it could be it could be neutralized by the elimination of other tax. So I mean that's a further whole another discussion. So we'll see what happens. Yes. We're going to move on to the uh, anonymous budget because we don't have much time. If there's no questions for Lynn. Um, thank you, Lynn, for coming. Thank you for giving me the time. Yeah. Um, so what we're going to do is just go over general government. Does everyone have the handout? No. Um, we'll, we'll start with general government. What, what the selectmen approved and the finance committee approved all matches. Ask questions? Sure. Yes. Please. Okay, why is the uh, court treasurer collector salaries have gone up? Almost 10%. I guess they have gone up. Um, <coughs> yeah. Tom, I think, I think because we've had openings in that office. Um, right. Is it, let me look at the picture. Can you repeat the question? Okay. Yeah, I asked, repeat the question. Why did the why did the clerk treasurer collector salary go up ten thousand dollars? Yeah, um, those are three people. Um, if you look, we'd, that would get us into talking about the compensation plan if we want to do that. Um, okay, why don't you, do you want to address that, Wendy? Uh, I just did. <laughs> oh. <laughs> We have a new compensation plan that's uh, part of it. Um, and let me just get to that in a sec. Maybe address the same thing, but the, the line below it has gone up quite a lot, too. The expense of the collector and treasurer. Um, the, the expense of the collector and treasurer is going up. Brenda Hill is our town accountant. <laughs> yeah. She has the, all the details that. with her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Your treasurer collector expense has gone up uh, mainly due to the fact that we're required to, to um, get another actuarial um, uh, evaluation done, and that's $6,000 alone. Mm -hmm. That's for our OPEB. Correct. Mm -hmm. our, our other post-employment uh, benefits. And as far as the salaries go, that, that is mainly due to the uh, compensation plan. Okay. If we have a chance to go through the articles, we can discuss that. Yeah. Yes, it's six point percent. Right. Six point eight. So I'm sorry. What were you saying, Wendy? Yeah. I said if we go to if we get to the articles, we can discuss the compensation plan, which will show up on all these items right. under you know line items for salaries. Okay, um, 
Why don't, do, do we, Tom, would you, would you like to, us to go to the compensation schedule so that we can address? Maybe you want to talk about it now? Yes, why don't, Brenda, why don't, we, why don't we do that? And that, that way it, it can address everybody's, because I think that's probably okay. what is going to yeah, be look, the question. Look at page 10 in your in um, guide. booklet. These will also be handed out at town meeting. Okay, so Brenda, could you go through this? Well, um, that's <coughs> Carolyn. Would you do it? Oh, yeah. okay. Um, what what we did is do the step increase. People people um, to do internal and parity. Um, most most of our we have 300, or nearly 300, town employees if you count the schools, and we have less than 10 percent. Um, that are not covered by union agreements. So we gave a step this year, and for the first time in um, a while, a COLA. I think it's um, been since the 2008, or not, no, it would have been 2009, because the economy crashed in 2008, so it would have been that next budget year. So we gave a cost of living um, raise, and so this is um, where we're, um, this is reflected in the comp schedule. So, you, in, it, so you increase the number of steps you made this year? Mm -mm. No. You no. Say people made a step. Oh, you moved them up a step? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we moved them up a step and gave a COLA for the first time since 2009, fiscal 2009. So it, it was partly an uh, internal parity because people were in the other unionized positions, the teachers and the police were getting um, a step in a COLA. So these are our, our rates for this coming year. For other years, you haven't increased the step figures? We, last, 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 yeah. last year, we did a um, whole compensation plan change. So we got kind of bringing up the the step, the, the whole compensation plan, since because it hadn't been changed since 2009. So that, um, the whole classification chart or schedule was updated last year. And then people this year just kind of moved a step as they do every year. Um, and then this year we decided to give a COLA, which we haven't done in a long, long time. So that's the change in pay. That doesn't mean that every year there'd be a COLA um, we're or at, even a step. Or even a step. So we're looking at different ways of evaluating how we can continue to keep it affordable for the taxpayers, but keep our our employees paid. Trevor, and most would you people. Move your mic a little closer to your mouth, please. Better. Yes. To most people, uh, I'll bring my old one. I'm going to channel <laughs> Mark Russo. Everybody on the finance committee remembers Mark. Um, Tom, why don't you introduce yourself? I'm Tom Clark. I used to be on the Finance Committee. I was selectman 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm a taxpayer. <laughs> now, I'm almost retired. Um, no, I guess the thing that always gets us is to figure out why your, your, the steps are automatic almost, right? There are evaluation tend, done from the people be. increasing tend, up. Tend to be, yes. So, so it's almost like a cost of living increase. Um, not really, because what was happening is people were moving up on steps, and we hadn't done a cost of living in, in a long time, so everybody kind of dropped off. You know, um, the, the compensation plan last year was so far out of whack um, from where surrounding communities were, yeah. and just the, the amount that positions should pay. You know, as we noticed when we were trying to hire people, we couldn't bring them in at one and two. We had to bring them halfway up, which was upsetting the personnel committee because we had a bylaw that we would start them at one or two, but the market just didn't allow us to do that. So last year was the big change. And then, and, and so yes, and so people move up a step every year and we struggle trying to figure out, is that the right thing to do? And we, we've been talking with a lot of people around the state, a lot of different communities and what, what do you do? do? Do people automatically move a step every year just because they show up? Or is it um, a matter of when they get hired, 
you know, don't have as much as experience, they're down here, and we plan on, what, you know, 10 years down the road, they're going to be really well educated, really providing the town, so they, they wind up up here. So it sounds like they're getting a pay, a raise every year, which they are, but they're kind of moving up to that experience level. And then, but coming from the private industry, you're kind of thinking, you know, everybody gets a raise every year. Why, do, why does somebody just automatically jump up? But it's the way we structure their pay to start with and where we think we're going to end up. Still have a struggle with that, but it's kind of the one. So what do you do with people that are here like 20 years and they're still so, at step 10? Correct. They so they only get a cola, step? and they haven't gotten, you know, if anybody's been at 10, hasn't gotten a raise if they've been at that top rate, only a COLA. Yeah. So, and, you know, if anyone's at the top this year, they would just get a COLA. And okay. longevity. For, and, and a longevity. We, yeah. do, we did institute longevity. Okay. Uh, we, last year was, we did longevity. And um, it, it's down on the bottom of the chart. It, it 10 to 14 years. So if you're oh, at the right. top, you get $200. 15 to 19 years, you get $300 stipend. And... Um, this is a yearly, like, mm -hmm. little um, amount of money. And 20 to 24 is 400, and over 25 years is 500. Yeah. So, right. obviously, it's yeah. not. I got, I've got my question to Okay, good. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. It's good, good discussion, though. Good, good to ask. All right. Um, so, general government, again, this is level service budget. This is not any real big changes. Um, does anyone have any questions on general government? All right. And again, general government is our, really the town hall. Then we're going to go to um, public safety. This is police um, payroll and expense. Uh, their capital is really just a police cruiser. We, um, years ago, uh, we really figured out that we use a police cruiser a year um, up by patrolling. So if we constantly um, purchase a police cruiser, then our, our, we have minimal expense for um, maintenance. And that's the idea of it. And John is very good about keeping our cruisers until they start really breaking down and then he brings in the other ones. So it, it seems like we have extra cruisers, but we just surplused the ones that were really breaking down tonight. Tonight, And um, with anticipation, hopefully, of replacing some down the line here. So we'll, we'll, our, we try to have as many as possible um, at any one time. Um, the canine control or animal control is is um, with it's our share, 25%, with Greenfield and Montague. Montague. Greenfield <laughs> plays 50% and oversees it, and we share with Montague um, that has the other 25%. What, what's happening with the drop of inspections department? We've uh, had a, a retiree, uh, so the next person came in as a lower, lower position. Dick, Dick retired, and we have Kyle now, who is at a, at a lower um, step. No, I figured that. Okay, the next um, one is education, which uh, Lynn went over, but uh, Deerfield and Frontier, but we also have Franklin Tech and Franklin Tech Capital um, on here, and um, the Frontier transportation which she had which is a separate reimbursement from the state and I I just wanted to um, talk about the the uh, Franklin Tech Capital I, I visited the building um, a couple weeks ago and, and if you get a chance to drive by they, they came to town meeting I think a couple years ago now and asked for some capital they haven't done anything to that building in 20 something <laughs> years and uh, I drove around the building a couple weeks ago it looks fantastic they've got all new overhead doors in, all new windows in um, they're cleaning up the grounds. If you get a chance to go by there, it's really looking good. Um, so that, this, I think, is a little bit more of their capital expenditures that they're working on. So I just want to mention that. Um, the next series uh, in, in our budget is the public works. This is your highway, um, our snow removal, which we are allowed to overspend in the wintertime, street lightning, 
street lighting, uh, transfer station expense, and our well monitoring that monitor, it's wells um, that monitor the landfill, the cap landfill. Um, that's mandated, um, you know, by, by law. So we have that um, part of our expense that's related to the transfer station. Um, it is basically a break even at the transfer station now. We, we, years ago, we had huge deficits, and we've been chipping away at it by just changing how we're operating, and um, it, it basically is a, a break even operation now, which is pretty wonderful. You mean your, in your income from transfer station was $180,000? Um, that before? We, we had about a $150,000 deficit. Um, it was 156 at one time. Remember, Tom, when you were on the Finance Committee? But it doesn't pay its own way. It's getting closer. But it's it's almost there. It, it's pretty much almost break even. Brenda, yeah. do, you have the do you have the exact figures? You don't I, have? I don't in front of me. Okay. I know as we were going over that, it was really close. It's very close. So, th and that's, so that's a tremendous... Great. Um, you know, savings on our, our operating budget. Um, the next series of, of um, in our budget is the human services. This is the Board of Health, um, Council on Aging, uh, Veterans Benefits, and the ADA coordinator, that kind of thing. Um, there is a difference between what the selectmen approved and what this um, finance committee approved. And I believe it is related to um, tick testing and um, the Mosquito District. I'm asking for $11,000 for the Mosquito District um, expense. We've been doing using that to um, do surveillance, but um, we were able to secure a grant this year for startup costs of the Mosquito District. So what um, most of that money will be used for is um, hopefully ditch maintenance. Um, and I would like us to maintain that level, that $11,000, so that we, we will have uh, the ability to do some um, maintenance. We, over the years, we've had so many complaints, like from Keller Drive and um, Bloody Brook area. It was pretty stagnant. And um, we do have a mosquito s species there that do carry disease that we're concerned about that we have trapped even in the last couple of years that were pretty dry. So the idea is to um, do some um, work through the district because if you have a district, you are able to do ditch maintenance because you're um, exempt from most wetlands regulations. So, um, and the other reason you would support the Mosquito District is because that is your conduit if there was some kind of emergency that CDC money would come to us. So, well, it's going to cost us $11,000 to join the district? No, that's for actual services. There is, no, there is no cost to join the district. It's, a, it's based on menu of services. So we would hopefully use that $11,000 <laughs> Um, towards working in our ditches in town. So why can't you use the $11,000 without joining a district? Because we need to join the district so that we are exempt from wetlands regulations to work in the ditches. The are district really exempt from wetlands regulations? Mosquito districts no. are exempt for most, most of the wetlands regulations. It allows you for public health reasons to work in uh, waterways and wetlands. And the, yes? Uh, aside from that topic that you're talking about, what else accounts for the amount? I'm assuming you're looking at for health expenses. Mm -hmm. um, it's tick testing. Um, if, right, there's some questions uh, hand out there on tick testing. Um, Are you talking the difference between what finance recommended and what we have, or just the total amount, period? I see 35000 Yep. And so, that, so we're talking about 11000 what's the rest? It would be the tick testing. There's $1,875 for tick testing. Um, if you um, did sent, if you, right now, you, if you were bitten by a tick, you could send it to UMass, and they would give a printout whether it was had carried Lyme disease or one of the other associated um, ba bacterial infections but it would cost you about $200.
okay, to get the full 19 tests. So what we were able to work out, if, if the town pays $15 for a test, so this is, we would um, front 125 tests, the individual only has to pay $15, and that way you are not, you can get your tick tested, it's about a 48 hour turnaround. Let me fix this. So you're asking what was $35,000, it's not ticks. So oh. our town nurse is involved. Uh, so the, the pay, the, our portion of the town nurse, um, you've got uh, dues, postage, meetings, uh, animal inspection, in insect control. Uh, what's that? I can't read really well with this. Yeah. Mileage gas. So the majority of that, tw almost $20,000 is in, is our town nurse. Anybody that comes in and visits. So. That's what I was asking. Yeah, okay. I, that's right. Just but, figured, but I figured no, I'd get you there. Okay, but the, there is 1800 yeah. $75 for tick testing. And that's, and so what I'm you're sorry, doing. I wanted to account for the 35 Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. So we're good. We're so good if, I'm good. I got all right. Thank you. Okay. Did anybody else have any questions on that? Yes. Um, I know in the uh, past couple of years, the $11,000 that was requested was for uh, uh, looking for where the uh, heaviest concentrations were of mosquitoes and what types of mosquitoes it were. Is that format changed this year? Well, because we got the grant for $150,000 startup costs for the district, yeah. um, we, we got 35000 to organize and get certified. So we are now official district. And, what, um, and there will be an article on the town meeting um, that we can go over on the warrant that is the mosquito district. And what that allows us to do is to participate in the $150,000 grant. Um, and that would do some of the surveillance that we had paid in the past for the 11,000. And I'm hoping that the 11,000 would be what we would be able to do for ditch maintenance. The idea is that our cost, I wanna keep our cost to the town to do any mosquito surveillance and, and hopefully make this into a bug district so we can deal with ticks as well. Um, it would be just capped at 11,000 max and that would be to do actual work in town or surveillance or a combination depending on what's happening. If we have a very wet year, we would probably want to do more, ma more maintenance and less surveillance because you would, your ticks would be, I mean your mosquitoes would be um, confirmed fairly early in the season if it was wet. From what, from what I get, from what I've been reading, uh, right now there seems to be a hole in that whole thing. As far as ditch maintenance, it says uh, you don't need to go through the wetland protection. And it appears from what I'm reading, they're uh, trying to correct that so that you would have to go through the normal pro uh, process to do any uh, work near the wetland. Bruce, I, I, I don't know anything about that. All I know is what's currently on the books. And that that, was, that, that's what's currently on the books. That yeah. Are, that, that seems to be a flaw in the system. Well, everywhere in the state, in the eastern part of the state, is doing it. And we're hoping, like I said, to address some of the, the, over, the, the salt that we're using is raising the saline levels in our standing water along the roads. So. It is con it's creating salt marsh conditions out here that are similar to the eastern part of the state. So we are concerned, and it's part of climate change, so we're trying to work on it. Thank you. Okay. Um, next, next part of the budget is um, the warrant articles. And um, we want to go, we want to make sure people understand the OPEB funding, so um, would you be able to address that sure. quickly? Just explain what the formula is and why there's a difference between what the select board approved and the finance committee approved. We what about the last? Yeah, we've got oh, this other um, page, I'm sorry. What page you want? Yep. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We, <laughs> we jumped ahead a little too oh, fast. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. I you. skipped to the back. Okay, we have the cultural and recreation Which section. Good. Yeah, I, I apologize. I skipped back to the warrant. So this, this is um, 
the Tilton Library, the swim program, Tritown Beach, Recreation Department, and Historical Commission and the Veterans Day Memorial Fund. It's all, it's pretty much, everybody agrees on those amounts. Is there any questions? Okay, the next series is our um, debt service. This is um, temporary loans. Barbara puts this in every year be just in case we need it. Um, you know, the interest on temporary loans, maturing debt, and our um, and the interest on maturing debt. And you can see that's dropping a little bit as yeah. well, which is nice. And then the eight and nine hundred series of the of the budget is um, our FERCOG assessment, un unfunded sick leave, Frank County Regional Retirement, Workers Comp, unemployment insurance, group insurance. Um, we did break out the town insurance and the school insurance. If you added in the elementary school insurance amount of $666,244, um, the increase um, from last year to this year makes the elementary school budget go up 4.13%. Uh, uh, 4.13%. So it's um, insurance is killing us. It's it's insurance. It really has an impact on our budget. Um, Medicare and Medicaid. Okay. Um, now we move on to the now warrant. we can go on to the warrants. There is a difference for the OPEP that um, Trevor can explain. That's Article Six. In the warrant. OPEB is um, other post employment benefits liability. It's for our employees that retire before sixty five. And it's basically health insurance that we pay for. So we are, um, this is Article Article 6. So this year we, uh, the select board established a trust fund for o OPEB, which is the other post-retirement benefits, which is the amount of money that we need to spend on insurance to cover our retirees um, before they're on Medicaid. And um, so we... Um, as a town, we generate a liability of about $442,000 a year in how much um, benefit our employees are accruing. That's our retired employee, employees and our current employees. And every year, we pay as we go. So we pay about $175,000 this year to cover our, retire, our retirees that are actively retired and need, need insurance. Um, we're ignoring the $225,000 that's building up for our active employees who are going to retire. So each year there's this large money that's accruing and we're not, we're not really addressing it. So a lot of people in the state, a lot of towns have not, and they're finally starting to realize there's a mountain of liability down the road. Um, so right now, uh, again, we have 442, 175 are paying off, 225 just piles on. We have about an eight and a half million dollar liability right now, looking out 30 years. Um, and so our goal was to develop it. We had to do a couple of things to get good insurance, uh, good rates when we go out for loans and all. A couple of the things uh, to get our house in order was to develop a trust fund, which we have done, and then to come up with a policy to fund that <laughs> trust fund. Um, we had battered around a few different ideas, you know, certain amount of free cash, um, just a flat amount each year. We had settled on 4% of what we are currently paying our retirees. So 4% of $175,000 is around $35,000. Um, it's woefully inadequate to address the issue that we're dealing with, uh, but it's a start, and uh, I'll take a start at this point. Um, so, so that's what we're, we're asking the town to approve is $35,000 uh, this year to put into the fund and start the trust fund, which we would then invest in mutual funds or you know, with Bartholomew or some other um, 
organization that takes care of our town's money, and that hopefully will build up, you know, as like a regular 401k would build up. So that and that will affect our, our amount of liability down the road if we're smart with our money. So the goal is to kind of put this money in. We're asking the town to do this. The finance committee um, is only recommending $10,000, which is, again, woefully inadequate. So we're, we're really hoping the town will support us in this policy because at least it gives us a policy on the book and we can, we can go from there. It's our job to pay for our retirees, you know, our kids are going to be saddled with enough debt in this country. We need to start addressing the debt that we have now and for our future. So that's kind of where we're at. Any questions on that? Are you all glazed over? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No questions? Um, we'll move on. The SCEMS Enterprise Fund is um, actually Zach is here. If you have any questions on that, we, are, we make about 1,100 runs. Um, a year, we're at kind of at that level. Um, the average response time is about seven minutes, and it is, um, we run three ambulances now. Um, Page 16. Yes. Yep, okay. Um, and uh, we're still, we're paying less for this 24-7 paramedic service than we were for basic um, a few years ago. So. Um, it's, it's a really good deal, and it's really working out, and um, we're very excited about moving into our new building in um, no, about a month. Are you going over this list? I, I, are we not going over? I just wanted to make sure that they were following along, because we're missing sewer. Yeah, you oh, okay. It's, I got not, it. it's not in, in order, I think. Yeah, well. So I just okay. wanted to make sure that we were going to. This is the one Because we missed, um, okay. we missed Article 9. And uh, Article 10. We're just going um, over the money ones. We were oh, just going over the gotcha. money ones. All right. Um, well, we missed Stewart. These are just the money yeah, ones. No. Okay. Well, the okay. ones that the town's going to vote on for. Well. But gotcha. we can go. But let's but let's go to that. We're, we're we're we've operated the sewer as as a sort of separate um, fund, enterprise fund, but it's never been a separate fund like the South County EMS. But we are recommending that um, this year that we make that into an enterprise fund. So why don't we just back up and do you want to just discuss that since you have that right there? Sure. So um, so the idea is to kind of is to is to move uh, again like scams is to move move it into an enterprise fund so that we could um, appropriate it. You know, do you want to? Do you have anything to add on that? Well, I was just going to say the sewer fund is is self-supporting, so the user fees pay for um, all of the expenditures for the sewer fund. Whereas with um, the ambulance service, we are subsidizing um, both Sunderland, uh, our Sunderland, Waitley, and Deerfield are all subsidizing that operation, which is why you see a dollar amount there for the enterprise fund for scams. And there is not one for the sewer fees because the sewer fees cover. Um, their, their costs. Yeah, you've got to be clear that you know, this is money that, as she said, the money that the town is appropriating, not what's money that's in that fund. Correct. Right. Right. Because right. you think this of is, the fund, you think that's the total amount the, there. This was the handout for tonight to discuss the fiscal issues, but the, this is what we'll be using okay. for going through the budget. It'll have a better explanation okay. and clarifying that. Um, so, the capital request, um, as Lynn indicated earlier, we were doing door hardware replacement at the elementary school and flooring replacement on a three-year cycle. Um, page 17. Page 17. And um, so this year's appropriation is 12500 for door hardware. Um, flooring is 17000 There is a... Uh, item here for a generator for the town hall for $53,000. Um, there is a re, um, quest to do some carpet replacement at the senior center for $8,300. We have a feasibility study of $25,000 for the church community senior center. We, we do not own that building yet, but we're hoping that we will obtain it. And this feasibility study of $25,000 
5,000 would um, be able to be used to assess the building. And we're hoping that we just hired Diane Cornwell, who has retired from Berniston um, as, the, as their a senior citizens director. And she's going to do a master plan for senior services that will kind of give us an idea of what um, space needs we're going to be able to do. So it's very exciting because then we would hopefully coordinate looking at the community center and, and the current senior building for senior housing going forward. And hopefully um, we'll be able to figure out our space needs and we have CPA money that we can invest in our buildings and we will be able to move forward in a relatively fast pace once we ret we get the building in hand. So I'm kind of excited about that. There's a replacement of a transfer station fence. It's actually required um, because the fence is in pretty bad shape. Um, DEP wants us to make sure we keep our transfer station secure. Um, we are buying a compactor at the um, transfer station because it actually works um, out that that will be cheaper than rental. It should pay for itself in a three to four year period. And then the last item is a new um, truck with wing plow that will um, eliminate one route, like say on River Road, because you'll be able to, instead of sending a plow down and then somebody to wing it off, we'll actually have a wing plow that will do it all at once. It's wide enough. so that um, hopefully will cut our operational costs for snow plowing a little bit. Is that replacing an existing truck? Yes. Or? Yes, yes. Uh, it's a 19-year-old truck. Yes. Um, it's in pretty bad shape. We had a, a meeting on that, and, all, and we, we have further information if you're interested. Yes, M.A. Um, on that compactor, um, that, that's at the transfer station? Correct. Is yeah. that for trash or paper? Yeah. Trash. 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 We, so we were, the, the comp, the, no. no. We already have to. We rent, we rent the we trash guess. compactor now, and we're going to, we're going to end up buying it. So we're we don't, gonna yeah. We're so going to buy one. Get a second. No. 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 Just be the same. It, um, we figured it actually will save us some money down the line to yeah. pay for itself in three or four years. Yeah. The compactor for the cardboard that was actually um, part of a grant that we got, as you were aware, I think. The last thing you see on there is the, is the roadside mower, and that's actually paid for by Eversource. It's a five-year We're the program. lead community on that, and um, we have to appropriate the money, but then we're reimbursed the money. Um, and after five years, the mower becomes ours. And in that five-year period, it's lent out to, um, for certain other communities um, for a few uh, weeks at a time to mow the side of the roads. And Eversource pays us to manage that program. And um, it, it's, it's a good deal for us because Great then we deal. end up with the mower at the end. Is there any questions on that? Okay. Um, well, the stabilization, uh, well, the, there's a request by Frontier um, for a tractor, which is separate. Um, and then uh, the stabilization count, uh, there was a, a little bit of confusion. Wendy, would you like to just address that, what the end result is? Well, the end result is that um, the Capital Improvement Planning Committee, the Select Board, and the Finance Committee have agreed to um, a, a take free cash, $500,000 from free cash, and distribute it evenly between a capital expenditure stabilization fund and a regular stabilization fund. I handed out a um, glossary of terms for, um, you know, even I have to continue to refer to these things, but so you have some, a little more familiarity with the finance terms that we use and that you're going, will be used in the motions, where money comes from, uh, where money goes, and a little bit of explanation about that. I'm hoping that we will provide more of that kind of information to make it um, either less, thank you for the thumbs up, Tom. <laughs> so, you know, we want to make things as accessible and understandable to people as possible. And um, so that's a step in that direction. If you have other ideas, we're open to hearing them. Um, the snow and ice overage account is, is, is an average that we um, upped a little bit. 
Um, this year, I think we spent 70,000 additional. Um, but we, it depends on the winter, and, it, and it's, it's an amount that we can deficit spend and that, that we adjust at the end of the year. Winter never left us this year, so mm -hmm. finally just left us, so that's our overage. Yep. Um, the Smith line, Smith Vogue, we actually don't have any students that we're sending out this year, so, but we just keep a dollar line item there in case we do end up with a student. And then the reserve fund transfer is just what the finance co um, uh, committee has in case there's an emergency. It's like short-term kind of thing. We don't actually have to go to town meeting. It's, we can address some kinds of whatever issue pops up. Um, I, if there are no questions, I'd like um, Alan just to address Article 16, which is the Community Preservation Fund. Um, Alan, if you don't mind coming up um, and introducing yourself uh, and then explain Article 16. Welcome. Thank you, Alan. Thank for you for coming. Yes, uh, thank you all. Um, I'm Alan Sweetland. I'm the acting uh, chair of the uh, Community Preservation Committee. And um, <clears throat> we each year have proposals that come before us for um, expenditures from our community preservation funds, which are uh, raised by a surcharge on property taxes in the town, a uh, very modest uh, number, which I'll quickly review. <clears throat> and um, what we're asking for is uh, proposals have come in to us. We've made, made approvals for each of, of these proposals. And again, the expenditures are pretty modest this year, uh, $350 for a um, work on the Tilton obelisk, which is the stone of uh, Mr. Chilton, who actually funded the Tilton Library, $5,000 for the Brick Church in Deerfield, the First Church of Deerfield, uh, for work on the louvers and the steeple, which are uh, deteriorating pretty badly and are going to need this probably and some additional money, which they're hoping to raise uh, with matching funds. And that's one of the things that's good about the community preservation money is oftentimes we can work with the group that's uh, requesting funds that qualifies and also encourage uh, some match them raising some matching funds. Nice. And then the other motions are kind of standard motions each year to set aside money for the major kinds of uh, appropriate uh, criteria for using the, the community preservation fund. So open space and recreation uh, is one. Community housing, which also includes uh, explicitly affordable housing for uh, seniors and um, um, uh, open space recreation. What did I just did I miss one here? Historic oh yeah, historic. historic preservation. I'm sorry, the first the, the first one there. And so you, as you may know, if you've been attending town meetings or paying attention, we've been working on preservation uh, of the in the cemeteries of some badly deteriorated stones, thanks to the historic preservation, uh, the historical commission using those funds some fencing around the Sugarloaf Cemetery, um, and also preservation of the uh, Civil War Monument in Old Deerfield. And there again is an example where uh, Deerfield Academy has provided matching funds to continue to complete that, that project. So um, just very quickly, uh, I know that it's c coming up later, there will be a motion uh, to uh, advise the select board to uh, consider reducing the current percentage that we pay as a surcharge on our taxes from 3% to 1%. And uh, in January, the, uh, the Community Preservation Committee did a kind of a quick overview of what that uh, impact might be and the, the uh, Community Preservation Coalition in Boston also gave us some uh, guidelines and a sheet which I'll make available. I don't know if I've got a hand, enough handouts for everybody, but I'll make sure the select uh, board gets a copy and have copies here for you to pick up at, at a later date. But what happens when you reduce from 3% to 1% is that you end up um, only being eligible for the first round of funding that the state provides for communities. And <clears throat> 
there are actually three rounds during the year as the legislature and, and uh, um, the finances become more apparent. Uh, so you actually, by getting through the first, second, and third round, which comes when you have a 3% surcharge, you substantially uh, increase the amount that's available for town projects. Now, some of you know that we have many, uh, we have some pretty good sums of money in the Community Preservation Fund right now. We have some very big and very worthy projects coming up, including uh, dealing with the senior center and senior housing. And so we're hoping that we can continue, I mean, I think I'm speaking for the committee now, that we can continue to uh, build on these reserves because they really are about the public good for the town. And um, it's a way for us to get matching money from the state at a very, very high rate. It's been as high as over 80% in the past. It's up to, uh, I think it was 40 some percent mm -hmm. this past year. So on a per dollar percentage uh, match from, this, from the state, it's, it becomes quite significant. And just so very briefly and quickly to let you know how this might affect you as a homeowner or landowner in, in town, if you have a home, for example, that's uh, assessed at $250,000, what the <clears throat> law allows is for an exemption of $100,000 off of that amount. So your surcharge rate isn't based on your assessment rate, it's based on your assessment rate minus $100,000. So the, your, your rate, the rate would then be $150,000. And at the current tax rate of $1,595, this reduces what would be uh, your almost $4,000 tax bill down to what your surcharge is based on, which is about $2,400. And figuring out the annual cost a year for someone who has a home valued at $250,000 or assessed at $250,000, it amounts to $72 for the full year, or about 20 cents a day. And keeping in mind that that amount of money that you're contributing through that surcharge is going into this fund, which really is for, as I say, projects which I think benefit the town in terms of the preservation of historic resources, uh, open space and recreation. This is the way we develop uh, matching money for when the state gives us uh, APR money for preserving agricultural land. Um, it was playground so money. We built the, rebuilt the elementary playground. That's right. I mean, as far as, uh, yeah, talking about uh, something that is really important to the community, I think, uh, enjoyed by many uh, parents and children, but also a number of people in town, is the substantial playground project that we did a few years ago for the elementary school. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, 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 was there a question? Oh, yes. Is it, are you reading from the wording of the motion? Yeah, I, I move with 330,000 for community preservation fund revenues to the reserve for community housing as required by general law. What is that? That that that's the money that comes to. So that's one of the three areas in which you can use these. This that you can actually set aside money in the in the community preservation act, and what that is. Uh, it can be in a number of things, but it does help with the being able, for example, to provide affordable housing for seniors in town. And How that's. Do we do that? We don't have housing for seniors. Oh, no, that's what we're hoping we're to. Hope, we're hoping so this, to build. This, so this will go yeah, into a reserve fund. Oh, okay. It's not, it's not targeted at a specific thing. It's, it's, okay. But it can be used for that. Field. Yes, exactly. Okay. Well, obviously, senior housing is going to cost more than what we have in the CPA, but what we want to do is do something with the current senior center, and we would hope to leverage, use this as leverage with private money, partner with private money, so that we could build eight to 10 units of senior housing, affordable senior housing. So in other words, it's, it's, not, it's not like the senior project that's at, on the end of Sugarloaf, which is market value affordable housing. This would be, if your Social Security is $800 a month, you would pay 30% of your $800 a month kind of thing. 
And just one very quick thing, and then uh, Brenda would like to speak to this also. I think it's very important also for people to know in town that what the Community Preservation Committee does is we don't, we don't appropriate this money and vote on it to be used. What we, all we do is we review the applications that come into the town, we make sure they fit the criteria, and then we vote that it's acceptable to bring them before town meeting. So you, the townspeople, are the ones who vote on actually doing the appropriations. All right. So may, may, I, may I further this, this woman's question? I think the question was, where is that 30000 coming from? And if I remember correctly, if money is spent from the CPC, uh, from the CPA funds for, let's say, historic preservation in year one, that year, the committee, I believe, is obligated to set aside X amount of sum of money, equal to that perhaps, in the other pockets. So, so that it doesn't all go. So for instance, if we're very active in getting cemeteries repaired, for instance, that was my family way. Uh, it's not as if I'm going to swallow up a million dollars in a cemetery repair because that committee is responsible for setting aside an equal amount so that open space and uh, housing and what was the third thing? Uh, uh, historic, historic preservation, yeah. Okay, so that, that, so that it's not going to be all taken away by one aggressive group. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll just clarify it a little bit. Yeah, M.A., sorry. <laughs> Um, the amounts in the motions that go into each of those reserves is a requirement of the Community Preservation Act, and it's based on our estimated revenues. So 10% of our estimated revenues have to be put into a reserve if they aren't being spent that year. So the reserve continues to build for each of those items. It just so happens that we usually have historic preservation um, projects so there's less in that reserve because we've been using that then there's a pocket of money that goes into just a general reserve that will be able to be used for any one of those projects that we have going on or that we have coming up if that helps that's thank you thank okay. you Brandon. Ava so now um, what, what number article is it that one wants to bring it down from it's back. I think um, it's, it's number 30. 30. Is it 30? It's a petition. It's a petition um, that actually Bruce St. Peter's brought up. Yeah, I'd like to speak on that. So, so wait a minute. I'm sorry. So, Alan, could you just say that into the mic? Because it's number 30. Uh, the motion uh, is, is uh, no, yes, number 30. So uh, I'd like to suggest that if people wanted to stay at 3%, that they stay at the town meeting till the end. Because it was stuck in at the end. And if we want to keep this at 3%, we need to vote for it. Let me, Thank just, you, uh, let me just respond to the stuck in at the end. That's the what we do with petitioned articles. It wasn't, it was um, one of the last yeah, ones. just to make that clear. Okay, thank you. Okay. And Bruce would come on. You want to come up, Bruce? Um, Bruce, if you want to just say short, because we're, we're actually over our... I, under I understand, but since it became yeah. a political football with the last speaker, I would like my... Please. Uh, okay. Summaries are on the table back here. Thank you, Alan. So, uh, okay, anyway, uh, I'm the uh, petitioner for the Article 30, and uh, uh, my feeling initially was to request that it be abandoned, but by the same token as Alan said, there is return from the state. This year, the first round is, is anticipated 11.5%. Uh, uh, there is an alternative to get the 3% match. The community preservation law does allow for the town to vote other revenues besides real estate and excise taxes to match that uh, discrepancy of 2% to bring up to the uh, town as a 3% match. Doing that would bring the total tax on the tax inside of the Proposition 2.5 because there, this is a uh, tax on top of the Proposition 2.5 already. So it, uh, it's really unfair. It's a circumvent around the 2.5 so that you don't have to use uh, normal budgeted monies. But there is an option uh, that just by 
uh, reducing it to 1%, you still have the option of using other, other revenues to bring that match up to the 3% so that you get the full three rounds. Thank you. Thank you. I'd just like to note that um, while Bruce is correct, we struggle every year to balance our budget, and, um, and, and really we only have a level services budget. This year, we're using $107,430 of free cash to balance our budget. And it, it, it really is tough. And while I understand what Bruce is saying, and maybe at some point um, we, we, would, we would do this, it's not like anybody wants to game the system. It, the CPA is investing back into our community. We do have projects on the horizon. I, I, I see the light at the end of the tunnel on senior housing finally after, I mean seriously, this has started in, in the 90s. So this is very exciting and um, I just, I hope people do, do keep wanting to invest in our community, that's all. Um, and, and we do, we are constantly trying to figure out how to deliver services of, of the pot, percentage of the pie that we have how do we keep delivering services in a more efficient manner? And, um, and, and that's our struggle every day. And I have to honestly say, we hustle as much as possible to try to leverage money outside and to get grants to do things so that we can um, offer at least the same level of services. Everything extra, you know, we, we, we do try to bring in the money for, for to cover. So if you have any other questions, um, we'd be glad to take them. But we have the marijuana articles that probably somebody would like to hear a little bit about. Um, and the Mosquito District, I think we covered. Um, and so we'll move on to the, um, I think uh, I would like Wendy just to address the articles on the, this is not a monetary article, but I would like uh, um, to use this opportunity to talk about the, the licensing, the liquor licenses, because that is a little bit of a conf uh, confusion. So by, by state law, communities in Massachusetts are given a quota based on population of how many liquor licenses they can have. There are basically two categories, on-premise, off-premise, on-premise being a restaurant or a bar, off-premise being a store. Um, there are also licenses for on-premise and off-premise, either wine and malt, which is just wine and beer, or all alcohol. Um, we've hit a limit. Uh, we've used up our quota. In fact, we have a request for one more on-premise, I'm sorry, off-premise um, wine and malt than we can meet. Um, as they all sort of came in recently. Um, we've got the international market up in... Um, what, the plaza, I was trying to think of the plaza, Tibetan but plaza. Tibetan Plaza, um, Tibetan Plaza, and we've got um, the bakery, maybe you've heard about, that's going to be opening up um, Bittersweet. Bittersweet up bakery, in the old in Savages market. market. We have um, a proposal from Cheslick's, uh, Cheslick's Market that's trying to reopen this, the market right here in town. So... We've got these competing for um, you know, more than licenses than we have. Now, what we've got, in order to get more licenses, um, we'd need town meeting approval. We being they, the select board needs town meeting approval. The authorization to file legislation to request additional licenses. This is on the warrant. That doesn't mean they're going to do it. doesn't mean they have to do it. They, they can make that choice. I think in the discussions we've had, the board would like to look at that, study that, get community input on that. I've heard from a, a license owner that is opposed to it, and I've seen this happen in other communities because they have more competition for them when they're trying to sell products themselves. Um, um, but it's a, it's a community decision. So this would just simply allow the board to do so but not compel them to do so. That would be the vote. Also, what we've got on, in the Warren article um, I think are for three additional licenses, uh, three and three, correct? Yes. Um, and that can be changed based on input and further discussion, but that's w um, what we have on the 
if, if we don't move forward with this, then we will have to wait till annual town meeting next year to then go through the legislature. So it's, it's not um, like you're giving us authority and then we have the authority. We, this gives us the ability to apply to the state and, and, and again, that's a, we that have to decide time. that we want to apply to the state and then we have to go through that whole thing. But at least we are um, given the permission to move forward if we choose. And otherwise we would have to wait till next year even to start the process. So um, then, this, what, and this wouldn't help with the immediate issue of having more competition for the licenses that we now have available. The board is going to have to address that to, through an evaluative process of, mm -hmm. of choosing who they'll award. Then uh, moving, moving forward, just so we don't have to stay too much longer, um, Article 25 is the, imposes the local sales tax on marijuana products. It's the retail sales tax. Um, we would be collecting real estate, um, you know, our um, assessors would assess, uh, um, you know, real estate values. But this is for actual product in a, in a retail establishment. So that's very important. Otherwise, um, we can't Sales collect tax. the tax. Sales tax. Um, then there's a little bit of a confusion on 26, <coughs> 27, and 28. Wendy, would you like to well, just, just... Yeah, just to back up a, lot, a bit, and I don't know how many of you, I hope all of you will come to town meeting to participate, um, and our council, Lisa Mead, will get up and give an overview that I will not do the best job at giving right now. I'll try to keep it short. But if you've been reading the news or listening to these meetings and hearing the discussion that's been going on, this is a rollout, a very quick and changing daily almost um, rollout of um, um, marijuana, uh, non-medicinal marijuana in Massachusetts from cultivation, retail sales, um, preparing the product. Um, it's, a whole, it's a very big industry that's sort of here. And it, as usual, things fall down to us at the local level to deal with. So if you follow the news as well, you read, uh, might have seen that Waitley last night at their town meeting uh, passed a bylaw, I think it was 74 to 1, to um, a zoning bylaw to allow it. Um, and we, we've been talking and sort of figuring, well, where would it go, you know? And yeah. most people think the sugar loaf shops here that I know of that don't they live in town, that. even folks who live here apparently think that that's Deerfield, but that's Waitley right there. So at any rate, um, we don't, I haven't looked at what their proposal is. But our proposal is, um, or the town's proposal and the planning board you can talk about, perhaps you want to talk about, Kip, at some point, what the planning board is, is recommending. Right, I'll let you so what we've got for town meeting is, um, came from the planning board. We, when, a plan, when the planning board um, has a zoning proposal before it, they are, um, and they vote to send it to the select board, the select board is, is, must put it on the warrant. Um, and I'll let... Uh, kept talk about their votes and the process of which they arrived at um, re recommending or being neutral and just sending it forward. Um, but at any rate, we've got on, the, on this warrant a prohibition, two articles addressing prohibition and one uh, addressing zoning. And those will, the way we will proceed, and again this will be explained better, um, will be slightly out of order depending on how you vote. If you vote one way, it could moot out another article. So pay attention when we get to that because we're going um, it's, it's to, it's a bit complicated. I don't well, know if you want to yeah, talk it, about the plan. The zoning amendments that are necessary for our town so we can govern where these uh, facilities go in all the aspects of growing and uh, dealing with all types of marijuana establishments, the planning board voted to move the motion of, or the bylaws forward to town meeting, but the planning board did not vote to recommend it, meaning a majority of the planning board didn't see to move this forward. As far as the uh, prohibition goes, that the planning board once again recommended to move this forward to town meeting, but in this case, the planning board did recommend the prohibition bylaw. Um, Two. It's, it's not in the order we're going to probably vote yeah. them. It, that's, it's, an, it's an error. Um, 26 is a prohibition and 20, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, <laughs> is it 26 and 28? I believe so, yeah. Okay. Tw article 26 and Article 28 are the prohibition articles. 
The reason that they are not in order is because they were put in place and we wanted to change them, but it was too late because they had already been posted that way. So we, you know, I think that uh, we're going to move to defer Article 26 until after the vote on Article 27 and 28. Mm -hmm. So 27 we'll discuss first, and that is all of the bylaws that govern where these establishments go, what rules and regulations they have to abide by. And here again, the planning board moved this bylaw to the select board so it would go forward to town meeting floor. But as a majority of the planning board, they do not recommend the bylaws. So that's where the confusion is. All it is is that the planning board moved it forward so the citizens get to vote on it. But the planning board personally, by a majority, didn't believe it was a good idea, so they are not recommending it. This, so, um, this changes the zoning of our medical marijuana overlay district, which is basically down by the Sugarloaf shops in that it, area to a marijuana district, and we would have one establishment down there. Um, right now we have a medical, uh, the select board is acting as Board of Health, um, two years ago brought forward the medical marijuana um, bylaws and now that we have a cannabis commission under recreational marijuana uh, that was approved by the state it's a transition from the Department of Public Health to the cannabis commission in the next within the next year probably so our zoning needs to be updated to keep our marijuana district, which is rather conservative, down in this area uh, for five and 10. And it also allows our farmers to um, cultivate uh, marijuana in the residential agricultural areas if you have five acres or more. So to continue on, to try and lessen the amount of confusion, so <laughs> Article 26 and Article 27 deal with the prohibition of marijuana. 26 and 28. I'm sorry, 26, 26 and 28. And uh, it'll, it'll be a good place to hear some discussion and input, but just so you know, it doesn't matter if it passes or not because there's a two-step two process to, um, pro, to impose prohibition in the town of Deerfield. First was the articles had to pass a town meeting, and secondly, it had to be on a ballot so you people get the vote but the select board decided not to put that on a ballot, so it becomes a moot point, even if these articles pass to probate that. Wouldn't they come up next year or vote a town meeting? Uh, can, can I? Well, it's already voted on as a member. Can I speak to this? The, yes. Just let, let me just speak to this a little bit. The most important article to pass is 27, and that's your zoning bylaws. If we want to have any control, <laughs> over what happens with marijuana in Deerfield, because it's all around us. 27, even the planning board understands that, or many members of the planning board that didn't support it, understand that you really need to regulate it. You can't have it wild west. So you have to make sure that your zoning is in order and that we have a controlled environment with where marijuana gets sold, gets processed, gets grown. 27 is your most important thing. Um, 26. If, if you want to, um, if you want to have a prohibition in town, um, you would need to vote for 26, and that would stop all marijuana in town. However, you all, because this this community voted overwhelmingly to pass marijuana and regulate it like alcohol in the 2016 presidential election, with 3,000 people involved voting, uh, we. You needed a two-step process. You needed it on the ballot, and you needed it in town meeting. I felt, just personally, I felt the community voted already for this, for this issue overwhelmingly, and 3,000 people turned out. Uh, my concern was that we only get about six to 800 people that come out um, in, a, in a May election, and we only get two or 300 people max at town meeting. I felt this, this was already uh, settled and we needed to move forward with regulating marijuana and making it safe for our, for our community. So I, I did not choose to put it on that ballot and I'll take responsibility for that, but I felt it was the right thing to do for this community and our surrounding community. Thank you, Trevor. Thank, Thank you. you.
So that, I think, so the most important thing that I'll settle on is 27 is really important to pass if you want to, even if you don't agree with marijuana, you don't have one in your family, you don't want one in your house, really important for our community to have funding, uh, you know, ta tax base, which is 20, uh, 25, so 3% tax base, so that we can fund our police departments and our security, um, and then 27, so that we can regulate, the planning board can regulate where these things are, are, are cited and, and you know, they meet all of our zone requirements. When, when we have, um, we would enter, the select board would enter into a host agreement with whoever is licensed to operate in town in the overlay district. Um, it, it's fairly restrictive, so um, it's, you know, we wouldn't be having them all over town. That's, again, why that's important to support Article 27, because if we have no zoning, then the entire town, you could put it anywhere, because there is no limits. So the overlay district um, allows us to have one establishment. You enter into a host agreement, and part of that host agreement is the outreach and community education, and that allows us to have a program that's viable um, and hopefully successfully implemented by however we choose in our schools. So um, I, that's the most important thing to me, is that we somehow have interaction and support activities in the schools so the kids have some kind of heads up. It's around, and we need to have them be educated and aware, and that's why. Why are there two articles to prohibit? I think, I think one was a prohibition and then the other was a, uh, to change the zoning. You know, you had to have two different articles to, um, I think, to, uh, pro to do a persons. prohibition. You had to change, like, that it wasn't allowed in any section one, because- One is a general had. bylaw and one's a change to the zoning bylaw. We, had a, we have medical marijuana zoning already. Right. So that's why it's fairly confusing because the state is, making us change our existing medical marijuana zoning to a marijuana general because we now have approved recreational marijuana in the state. And, and um, you had to eliminate um, our medical marijuana zoning if you were gonna prohibit it. So you had to remove the existing on the books medical marijuana zoning. I was just wondering about the legality of the whole thing. I'm trying to understand this. If, if the town voted in 2016 and approved it, that was a legal election with a vote. Right. And to, to put this on the warrant, um, I don't understand it. Well, how can that be legal when, as you said, the numbers of people who come to that meeting do not, are not representative of the numbers of people well, it's a process thing. Um, it, we are required as the select board to put it on the warrant if it's forwarded to us by the planning board. This was generated okay, so in the, by the planning board and they wanted to do right. it. I, okay. I, think, I think half the people don't understand. What we voted for was medical marijuana. No. This no, no, wrong. No, no, no. 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 Legalization. No. No. no, that's not true. No. I think this is for recreational. No. no. 2016 was recreational. Two, two th we had 3,095 people voted in the 2016 presidential election that approved recreational marijuana in town. And that's what Trevor was relating to. Um, actually, what we have on the average in May turnout is usually about, on the ballot, is about 400. So, and we've had as low as 171 just a couple years ago. So. Again, Trevor and I voted uh, uh, to not put it on the ballot because we felt the town had already voted in favor of recreational marijuana. I myself actually voted no to recreational marijuana because we don't have a really well way to regulate, um, you know, like a breathalyzer test for alcohol. Um, so to me, it was, um, it's an extra expense because you have to have verification uh, when a police person does a response, you have to take extra officers to court, all that kind of stuff. But it's a mute point because the state voted for it and um, there are no other communities except Williamstown in the corner of the state, um, Ludlow, um, East Long Meadow, and Wilbraham down here 
on the Connecticut border, everywhere else it's legalized and, and it's, so it's gonna happen. So we need, to make for, we need to move forward, we need to take the revenue that we can generate to uh, um, it, make sure that we have, we have cash to um, mitigate any Im negative impacts. We need to e educate our kids and we just need to move forward and roll it out as conservatively as possible. The zoning um, in our overlay district by using the medical marijuana overlay district, which was Dick and I sorted out two or three years ago, or three years ago now, based on what we felt was the best area in town. We're using the same overlay district, and we would have one establishment because it's based on the percentage of um, 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 alcohol licenses you have. So we would have one license establishment, and the other thing is we are letting, we're supporting our farmers by giving them the option to grow marijuana in town. So it's pretty straightforward. We're trying to be conservative, but um, just moving forward with the reality that it's going to be around us no matter whether we approve it or not. Would, would the prohibitions uh, affect medical marijuana in town? No. 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 They're excluded. It says that explicitly. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, excuse me, point of clarification. Um, Why don't you come up Am to... Oh, thank you. Emily, this is cool. Um, um, the vote that we had in 2016, was that for the entire state to allow recreational marijuana? Yes. Yes. Because otherwise it seems like we're talking about state versus sort of a NIMBY, do we want it in our backyard? No, no. no it was issues. the entire state. So 2016 was a, the 3,000 people voted in relation to the entire right. state. 3, and now there's the question, people. do we right. want it in Deerfield? Right. And, and the state uh, vote was general to legalize. Right. Not what that. has happened since then is the Cannabis Control Commission has been created, and they've been working and churning out regulations, and we're trying to follow them. And it's rather complicated. And um, it changes all the time. It, yeah, they've had. It's not so much they've changed as reinterpreted what they're saying, and it, so the lawyers, that's what they do. But I guess it does make a difference to me as I'm thinking did Deerfield vote for marijuana in Deerfield? Yes, 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 yes we, did. Did. we did. We did in we 20. For marijuana in you voted for marijuana. No, yes. you voted for marijuana to be legal, legal, legal in and regulated as, mar as, as alcohol is. In, in your communities. It didn't say in Deerfield because it's a state question. You, we voted uh, community by community. We are, we are a yes each, community. Each community would vote and, and, and ours passed. I, so it did in fact in 2016 say, yes. do you want it in your community? Yes. Well, well, it I have said to look at the language, but yeah, it, that was the idea. Okay. Yeah. I'd, I'd like to go on to explain something too I think is kind of getting missed by a lot of people is that the planning, I'm on the planning board, there's a lot of things to consider, and it doesn't necessarily mean that I or other people on the planning board are against the marijuana thing, but in our job and roles, each and every one of you, when you go home tonight and you enjoy the bright stars and the dark skies, just think that if you live near a parcel of land, doesn't matter if it's wooded or field, if it's more than five acres, 25 feet from your property line can go up a 35 foot tall building with a security fence, bright lights every 25 feet with an alarm, that, that's what you're going to have to live by. Yeah, it's not going to happen. That's not I'm, not, I'm not saying well, it's, it's going, going but that's exactly what I'm saying. What I'm saying, it's not. I'm not we're going to move on. Let me finish. Let me let me know. Let me know. Let me let me know. I'm, not fear, I'm not fear mongering. I'm just yes, saying that. Yes, all right. If I'm sitting here, and, and you come back because your neighbor wants to do this, my hands are then tied because the town voted to allow me to do this. And I just want you to be aware of it. It might well, not happen to you, and I'm not trying to scare you. Yes, Shane, what would you like to say? I, I heard you say that you want to, I thought it was actually kind of interesting, maybe even amusing, that we talked about alcohol and now marijuana right after it. So we have we're looking for the right to increase the amount of licenses uh, we um, award for alcohol. And then I just heard somebody say that the amount <clears throat> that the amount of of, uh, of places to 
to sell marijuana of whatever kind. It's a percentage of your alcohol licenses. And I want to know how many licenses. One. One. No, two. One. For how many, how, many, two. how many increases in alcohol. By the way, Kim, I live within hearing distance of the drugs that come out of the <laughs> tavern right here in town. Yep. I believe and you. can I come to complain to the planning board about this? Nope. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm trying to warn you. Actually, how many that... more licenses of alcohol do we, do we need to uh, increase in order to move on to uh, an extra building for... Uh, well, alcohol? we're at 1.1. I mean, 1.4, I think, licenses, and, and right now, I was told um, at the MMA meeting that we were, we were only have to have one. But now it's being interpreted because we are a yes community, we would have to have in two. In 2016. In two, and um, yes. we voted to support that in 2016. And so obviously, if we were um, having to increase our licenses, Again, I'm not sure how many the percentage it would be, but that would be one of my considerations, whether I would want to have more liquor licenses, would be to see what would the impact of be for more um, retail outlets. But again, they're confined to the space down across um, by the Sugarloaf shops and in that area. You could, the overlay district, we can have a map to make sure people are aware of where it is. So. What? You know, one, one item. I just want to clarify one item. You know, I watched the Waitley Town meeting last night. Their planning board had done a nice job. They uh, any facility needed to have low lights. They needed to have have it look like a barn. Um, th there was a lot of thought put into the, the you know the look and how it affected the community. And so it, maybe we could still do that in the future that the planning board could. I, I don't know how the how the zoning laws work, but um, instead of having a giant monstrosity with security alarms and lights going off and sirens, we could make it look like a barn. Um, that, that's what Waitley worked on, is just kind of the aesthetics of it, not so much, you know, I think one, pe one person voted against having or, it. So. Or another bar. <laughs> or another bar. <laughs> yeah, we could put a neon Miller sign in there. I don't know. <laughs> the but. other thing I, I just want to mention, in this zoning, if you adopt the zoning to have some control over it, it does have the planning board be the special permit granting authority for it. So it's back with the board that wasn't terribly supportive of this. So it'll be, I, I think. We, um, um, there is a possibility that, I mean, I was going to bring forward amendment to um, have the select board, because the select board, board of health is, is currently right now as medical marijuana is, um, is the licensing board, um, a review board. And I was thinking of have, having that amendment, but I haven't totally decided one way or the other yet um, that the select board would be the, the um, board that would have the authority just based on the fact that the planning board has not had very much interest and they, instead of working on it in a way like Waitley's planning board did that, you know, mitigated some of the negative things that people talked about. Instead of fear monitoring, they worked on barns and low lighting and stuff like that. So I, I don't know yet. Um, I'm, I'm mixed on that because traditionally the planning board should have the mm -hmm. right. But, you know, they, they didn't even, they made no real effort to work on this and, and, and mitigate the impacts to the town. So it's something that may or may not happen at town meeting. I, I'm still deciding. But anyway, thank you. It's after 9 o'clock. I really appreciate everybody coming. Um, I'm hoping you will look at the, yes, M.A.? I was going to ask you a question about Article 29. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, is the, is the uh, 110 Railroad Yard Road the um, true or, or uh, all state? That? No, it's this is the um, Pan Am property. The, I'm sorry, the Pan, Pan, Pan Am, Am property. Am. So a company came to us at very last minute, um, wanting to install a solar facility, and um, they apparently worked. They told us they, us being myself and John Cordero, the assessors who have a big role in this process, the pilot agreements, because this is considered personal property. These so 
photovoltaic right. Right, installations. Right, right, right. So uh, they told us that they've been working with um, railroads. They t traditionally site their um, arrays on railroad property. But um, we're still trying to figure out things with them. So this just right. would allow that to move forward. So move if they forward. go forward, we can get some uh, benefit out of it. I'm, I'm yes. sorry about that, Emma. I didn't mean to shortcut anybody, but I was worried because we were trying to keep this relatively short, and it's nine yeah, o'clock. We're going to have this. We'll okay. have this much more fun did on Jeff, Monday. Is Jeff, yeah. <laughs> oh, did you have did one more question? Anybody? Anybody? Yes, and then. And just the last question is: Emma, if if Article Twenty Seven passes at the meeting, mm -hmm. isn't it the obligation of the planning board to then move ahead? Yes. I mean, any licenses would come for them. And I think they follow the rules. Yeah, with plenty, they yeah. follow the rules. And I, you know, I kind of felt uh, just my two cents on Carolyn's statement on the. I had originally wanted to push for um, having the special permit granting authority because I I know the work that, that our board health and our select board have put into this issue, and I hadn't seen it on the other side. But you know, I, I pulled a lot of other communities, and it is. Special permitting generally does stay with the planning board, and I, I kind of trust them to do do the job. So I, you know. I mean, we're it, we're sitting on the fence on it, so we'll, we're going to think about it some more and try to come up with a game plan for Monday. Um, sorry, it's not more clear because you you really try to want to do things the right way. So thank you. Thank you. And if you have any more, if anyone has any questions, um, they can get in touch with any of us or Wendy, and we'll try to get back to answers, okay? And thank so you thank all you for very coming much. out. Thank you. This is one of the best information night attendance that we've had. So thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for doing it. Okay, I want to tell me if people, that's what they want. That's, you know, they get what they deserve, huh? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. This is, uh, I should say, that's R A. That's the central village district. Yeah, this is the center, pretty much the center. Time. That C1 is a commercial district. That's also pretty much right in the center of town. C2 is a commercial district. And that is um, like around Route 5, all the way to where the Canada White used to be, a little bit down in Old Deer. Motion to adjourn. Just quick. Second to adjourn. Trevor made the motion. I'll second the motion. Okay. Uh, that's uh